from Croatia. It's uh, 6 p.m. here in Croatia. I know we're these crazy times. Uh, this is like one of the advantages because we can be together and share the experiences. We haven't, haven't done that in the past. This way, we kind of got together in person, which was also okay, obviously, right? But before I hit it off, uh, what you said, Paul, uh, uh, Tom's in Japan and he's, uh, he's I, I know it's really late over there. So maybe just first of all, to say thank you. He's an ex, not a good friend of mine. He's an extremely good friend of mine. And you know how people click, uh, not because they, even though sometimes you have the same type of beer you drink, obviously, right? But then you have, you have, you share the same, same passion, same, uh, same philosophy, same drive deep down inside yourself. And then we kind of not knowing about each other. As, as the years went by in the conferences, you know, I heard about him, he heard about me. So it all went back and forth, back and forth. And we, like at the end of the day, we kind of said, listen, we got to physically meet. And we met and Tom visited me in Croatia when I was a sporting director of Dinamo Zagreb. And then we kind of kept the communication on. And uh, I know Tom, you might, since it's really late, you might, you might shut down as the presentation goes on. So uh, first of all, thank you for getting me in touch and, and putting me in contact with Paul. It's a privilege to meet you, Paul, as well. And, uh, and the club uh, and all you guys, I, I can't see right now, but hopefully there's going to be some Q and A's and we can uh, obviously after the uh, presentation, stay in touch. So Tom, before you maybe going to leave us as the, as the presentation goes on, because I think you've seen most of it and we keep in touch regularly before, before anyway, uh, outside of these official, let's call it presentations. Uh, Tom, uh, you got anything to say on your side? Yeah, well, thanks a lot um, for that, uh, that little background about us. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Romeo, for doing this for us. Um, this is a great opportunity. I know a lot of these coaches who are on here because I've made so many visits uh, to Houston. Um, but I also want everybody to know that you're not a foreigner to the United States. You, you went to school in the States. Uh, I joke around with some of my friends and say, maybe you might even be a little bit more American than I am. So you've got a great insight into American uh, football as well. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to try to stick it out the whole time. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it as well. I've got my pad and my, my, my pen here uh, to take notes as well, because I always learn stuff when we talk. So with no further ado, um, good luck and let's get it going. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, I mean, as I said, the reason why we, why we kind of keep in touch and why we kind of get along that well on the, on the soccer side of the, of the psychology is because I... I so appreciate and I so understand and I so uh, support the, uh, the, 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 the education, the methodology that, that Tom is talking about because I'm first aware how important it is in a, in, a, in a country of the size of Croatia who is four million people and if you go by car three hour from east to west to north to south. And then you don't have too many kids, you don't have too many infrastructure, too many fields. And then because of the culture, I think this is the key word, uh, the culture is uh, uh, still, not still, but it has been always been like that, a soccer culture. Um, and, and, and me and Paul were just chatting before we, uh, we got on completely now. And I must say, for example, let's say up until 15, 20 years ago, we were, because of the extremely talented entry level of the kids at the age of six, seven, nine, eight, these ages, uh, because they were so enormously talented because of the entry level, because of the culture, because of the, how they played at home. And when we drafted them, when we picked them, they were so talented. All these tournaments that we've, we've taken part in uh, all around Europe, because you probably know there's been tournaments, not only U17s and you know, 19s or, or, or 21s, there are tournaments for the U7s and U, even U6s and U9s and U11s, even the serious ones. For example, in Vienna, there's one, the strongest tournament for the U8s, 9s and 10s in the Europe where Barcelona comes when all the English big clubs come, all the, all the German clubs and we come. And, 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 and 15, 20 years ago, we've been, we've been really among three top spots all the time, winning it a couple of times, being second, you know, third, you know, first, second, third, really, really because of the talented culture and talented entry level of the kids, we were winning those tournaments. But what happened was later on, we were falling behind, you know, and that was my concern later on. So the entry level was excellent, 
But then later on, at the age of 14, and you know, somehow they were, you know, they were catching up with us. You know, at the age of 16, everybody was kind of catching up with us. At the age of 19, we weren't as dominant as we were, uh, as as we seem to were to, to to be in the beginning when it all started at the age of seven, eight, and ten, or or even before. So that that was my concern, and that's when we kind of tried to make a trigger in the Canopy organization. And what I'm going to talk about today is 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 exactly about this you know how from my point of view how from the uh from the from the general organization and the structure of the academy even though it is such a broad topic and i'm not going to be able to actually go and touch every single little detail i'm going to be since it's the english background population and you guys are hearing and listening to me it's going to be for me easier to kind of go with the flow a lot faster than I usually do when there's some kind of a different language translation because they always cut you and then you stop and then you kind of lose the flow and lose the motion. So I'm going to go try to go really fast. So about making sure you understand everything I, I, I say. And then later on, when you got, when you got a question or Q and A's, we can, we can, we can, we can go with this. So all these things that you hear today, it's not a recipe. It's not kind of a, any kind of a, any kind of definitive uh, 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 methodology. Everybody's got to follow. This hit the spot here in Croatia. This fit our culture with the extremely good. I gotta repeat it with the extremely good entry level of the quality with the kids because when you see the kids at the age of six, nine, and you know six and six, seven, and eight, how how good they are, uh, 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 then it's obviously easier easier to build stuff on. But if you don't build stuff on that then it's going to be something what I was always in the beginning concerned of was, okay, now we're going to have excellent, the best kids in Europe at the age of 10, at the age of 15, you know, not as good. And at the age of 20, we're not going to be good like nearly as we should have been. So something we were missing in the organization of the academy and trying to combine both things, the good entry level, what Tom's preaching about, and, and, and the, and the academy organization structure. And then even the, even the serious, I call it survival in the soccer at the age of 18, 19, 20, because not even, it's not even enough to be good at the age of 15 or 16. You know, that's where it all started. The, light, the latest example of the kid that was that just drafted, I have a good friend of mine who lives in New York City. I just came back to New York a couple, a couple, a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. and I saw the kid. He's, a, he's from my good friend's son, and he's 16, and he was dominant. Like, he's dominating in the New York area, and everything's been to... Uh, been to New York City, I think to uh, New York Red Bull all across, been the best kid over there. And I brought him here in Dinamo Zagreb Academy. And he's also good, he's very good. But the difference is, you know, like, you know, the real survival is just starting right now at the age of 16 and 17. And the real battle and the, the re literally survival is starting right now at the age of 16. So I'm gonna try to go through the mythology. I, it's gonna be interesting. And as I said, uh, I, will, uh, I will share I'm going to don't take it as a recipe, just take it as a, as my experience as, as a, something, what I have been doing with my guys here in Croatia, in the, in the, in the Croatian development part. Uh, just as an example, uh, uh, people, I've been like the last 20 years, I'm working with the talented, talented players, you know, and when people say, you know, I have a talented kid. Uh, I, I would always want to be really careful about what is a talent, how to define a talent, and what is this really all, you know, inclusive in, in, in the talent. For example, 15, 20 years ago, this guy was one of the most talented players on the planet. I mean, just tell me, name, name five players that played in their careers, both for Barcelona and Real Madrid in their careers, I don't think you're going to find too many of them, maybe two, three, four of them. And this guy was one of them. So he was the, one of the most talented. He's been announced as a most talented player of the under 21 World Cup, uh, under 20 World Cup that took, him, took, uh, took place in Chile in 1987. His name is Robert Prosinecki. You probably heard of him. But take a look at the football, the soccer that he played and what it looked like uh, 15 or 20 years ago. Just quickly, so we have something to start with. Thank you. 
Uh, I don't know what I mean. If somebody tells me he's not, if he was an Italian player, you know, I, I I don't know if Barcelona and and Real Madrid would would pick him. But but something something for us now in 2020 for me anyway is something is something is not right. Something is uh, completely different to begin with. And now he's the whole coach in in Turkey's first division. Uh, excellent guy, good coach. But as a player at that time, so that wasn't a million years ago. That was 20 years ago. He was playing football. There was a couple of highlights from his game. But if you look at the numbers um, of the numbers of the touches per possession and the number of the average time per possession of the two games, for example, if he played, you know, he kept the ball five times at least. That was a minimum. That was minimum and time, four seconds, five seconds. That was minimum of the time he had compared to, for example, the guy that we know who's the captain of the Croatian national team right now that don't didn't play for Barcelona but he plays for Real Madrid so just as good right or 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 because it obviously can get both at the same time it's not normal the numbers and the figures how it is so it's a lot faster so it's not even a lot faster those figures are the lowest could could go even lower than that but so average time it's like second even gets lower than the second in most of the times when when you play um, the definition of the talent throughout the years definitely changed and, um, and, and trying to pick the right guys to actually fulfill the demands of the modern game completely changed. And one, one, one beautiful example later on, I will try to show you um, the definition of the talent uh, because luckily, I don't know why, they call us Brazilians of Europe here in Croatia, a small country, 4 million people. There's Serbia right across here. Three hours from here, Bosnia, Montenegro, really talented area of the pop, of the soccer population, but the Balkans, let's call it Balkans, right? It's been uh, it's been really talented. Uh, other than uh, uh, okay, outside the Brazil in the area of the South America, have been relatively relatively analyzed, probably the most talented area on the planet for for, for the players. Partly because of the big part, because of the culture part, because because of the Soccer goes into the schools very early, very early as a subject, literally as a subject, as a subject you can choose, as a subject you can have at the same time. But then for us, it was easier to actually then, 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 then build, things, build things on. Quickly, everybody knows what went on, what happened two years ago. Uh, it, will be, it will be not, not good to talk about that too much. It was something for us spectacular, uh, you know, being there on a big, on a big, on a big screen uh, that the whole planet's watching you and then everybody was questioning how guys when what what yes i was a technical director at that time um the, the previous 10 years an academy director at dinamo zagreb academy and um it was uh, when people ask me okay so what is the recipe how you guys did it uh, i think after the presentation we will just get a lot of more info and then we can have the conversation back and forth. So Russia was something obvious that what was the top achievement for the for us, for Croatia, for the nation. I don't mean necessarily only soccer, I mean in general. I mean, we're such a small country, nobody heard of us. If you probably ask, don't get me wrong, a lot of Americans maybe don't have never heard of Croatia, never mind being able to show where, what, where we are. But one thing that always maybe people didn't know, everybody knows we were second, we ended up uh, second in Russia, but not too many people know that one club and one academy with the highest number of the homegrown players, which was 10, and players that played for the club, which was 14, the only club, so much more than Barcelona, much more than Ajax, much more than all other clubs was, was Dinamo Zagreb Youth Academy. Um, again, um, don't, don't mean to go in any kind of a direction, okay, we did it, why we did it, because uh, this is, for example, the, the World Finals and the Champions 2013 for the U15s. This is the unofficial World Cup for the U15s. We beat AC Milan in the, in the finals, we beat uh, Arsenal in the semis, and we beat Boca Juniors in the quarterfinals. Um, this generation, for example, uh, and other than the other guys, later on, uh, 25 professional contracts only in the generation age group 98. So the guys were born 98. Uh, when you look at the uh, 
when you look at, for example, the transfers in the starting from 2007, if you look at the starting 11 of Dinamo Zagreb, what could it look right now with the Mandzukic, with Modric, with Kovacic, with Brozovic, with Chorluka, Lovar, and Versalko, Vida, uh, Kramaric as a starting, let's say, 11, and then you have Brekalo, this is one of the guys there, also Sosa, one of the guys from the 98 generation, Benkovic, Imanic, Olmo, Leipzig, Fiorentina, Tottenham, Arsenal, Barcelona, Bayern, only second, and also other 15, 20 guys that that got transferred, uh, grossing more than 350 million euro in the players' transfers, was something that I think made us, let's say, well known or well recognized all around in the in the in the world. Even though you're fighting against the big guys, and all respect to all the big academies in Europe, Sporting, for example, I respect a lot. Uh, obviously a lot of good English academies as well. Uh, but as a small country, yes, we, uh, we, did, we did a big, a big, big let's say, step up. And then after we got second in, in Russia, uh, people kind of wanted to go investigate. And I my, myself had to say, I had a lot of questions being a technical director, uh, why this all went the way it all went, especially in Dinamo, because Dinamo was, uh, Dinamo was the, 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 the main ground point. Uh, as it all started, uh, let's say 15 years ago, with a word that I call system. I call it system for a reason because system means some kind of an order, some kind of a clean, neat um, a, a order of, of activities that took place one after another. And four major parts for me, uh, for us. Yes, I was the director of all, but I had a lot of, I was, I was surrounded where, with, with 20, 25 just as equally ambitious crazy passionate people uh, like myself and then we were trying to push something and and I think we did it at the end, end of the day. So player coach competition and development program. When I was in uh, all around, even in the States, um, I go there really back and forth really often and I, especially the countries there are financially really powerful, Canada, Australia, um, player, yes, you can find a good player every once in a while. There's always a good coach. There's always a development program, but a competition was something what I was, what I was failing, what I was always concerned not having because kids have to compete, compete not too early in order to win the game necessarily, but to compete to actually build the competitive mentality. And uh, you cannot say now, listen, you see how guys, you how much you fall for the winning for the result. Yes, at the age of U9, you don't. But the age of U17 and U19, you have to fall for results because those guys are going to get on a big scene, big arenas in two or three years where the result is going to mean everything. So they got to get used to actually winning those games. So everything has its stability and the competition is also very one big component of that. Um, let's go start with the player first. Talent identification should be normally distributed in a population. That's, I think, every, every effect, every kind of a, a thing all around the world should be normally distributed all around. Just as well, talent, right? However, when we analyzed, I on purpose didn't want to put Croatia in here. You probably saw that table, and we were even worse before, I must tell you, we were worse. The three quarters of the year, so the first three months, second three months, th th third three months, and the fourth three months in a year, what is the percentage of the players that made it as a players, uh, but being born in these parts of the year? So let's say 42% of the players were born in the January, February, March. And then the 28 in the second three months and the 19%. So take a look, only 10% were born in the last three months of the of the year, of the given year. And uh, in all these big countries as well. Croatia, again, even worse before when we took those numbers before. Uh, whereas it should be normally distributed. So something was wrong. These 42% was because of the, I think the answer is very simple. Coaches wanted to win and they wanted the physical kids because the kid that was born in January was definitely a little physical on the average than the kid that was born in December, right? And, uh, and, 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 and those kids here were so neglected because take a look at the at least up until the 25 percentage, never mind having something more. I can tell you right now that the, nobody knows this information, but 90% of the Croatian national team, and you can go look it up yourself, 90% of the Croatian national team that got second place in Russia was born in the second half of the given year. 
of the age group that they fell into. So they haven't been born in January up in June, so only 10%. I'm not saying that was on purpose, but okay, nobody was kind of falling this much for the, for the result so early, having the early developers this early drafted, uh, but actually appreciating the long-term talent that's going to occur later on. In, here in Croatia, at the, U, at the U8 level, we have 6,000, literally more or less, a couple of players, more or less, 6,000 6, players. And in the, in the first league, in the first division, pro division in Croatia, 250 players. So we can't afford literally having taking the top talented guys and bringing them up and then the top talented guys bringing them up, not making, not affording one single mistake to losing one single talent in order to make it being competitive in a league, first division, who, by the way, is not too competitive when you look at all around in Europe. Why? Because when they get to the U17s, for example, 18s, they already got picked up by the big fish. You know, the big fish always eats a small fish, and that's, that's how it's been all around. So the Croatian A national team, none of the guys plays in Croatia right now, which is normal because they got drafted by the big clubs. And, and, and I showed you on, 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 the, on the map, on the field over there, what Dinamo could look like if all the players stayed with all the big names that you guys probably all recognize, more, most of them. Uh, but obviously they haven't because they got picked uh, at the age of 17, 18, 19, where, by the way, for example, the best guy out of, out of, out of all of them, Luka Modric, he got transferred to Tottenham at the age of 23, and he wasn't at the age of 19 nearly as, as, as such a good prospect or the guy that was a savior of Croatian soccer. No, no, he was on the loan to the second Bosnian division. Uh, how can I describe that for you at the age of 19 to go to Bosnia, which is, which is a soccer country, obviously, but the league itself, it's a, it's a, it's a beyond survival. You know, you got to be looking, looking, looking after yourself to literally stay alive on the field, never mind being able to play the game, right? And then he survived and then he came back to Dynamo and he got on a loan again to the first division club. So at the age of 23, being a captain of Dynamo, then he went to Tottenham that late or relatively late, right? Now, when you are, uh, when, when people ask me in Croatia, you're so how, how like guys, what a, I think you, you saw that photo every couple of occasions and, and I'm not going to go directly into this. So do you, 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 you try, you make, you, you think that I'm crazy myself, but something what, what being close to these guys, because I remember Luca when he was 12 and I remember all these guys, you know, how they really went through all their education and believe me, if it wasn't for this and for this and for this, Nothing, nothing of this would have, would have happened as much as it happened. So when, when we speak about talent, um, they're talented players, but to be ready, and I'm not saying necessarily go and have your bloody head every single training practice, but if it needs to be taken that way, if it needs to go that way, if you need to, we say, to put your head on the cleats, go against the cleats, if it needs to go that way, uh, if those guys don't have it inside themselves, they will not make it to the top. They will make it because they're talented. You know how they say the talent will take you to the top, but your personality will keep you on the top. And, uh, and this is the personality, what I would say. Uh, yes, people say, you know, you guys, you play for your country with the passion so much because of the war, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we were in a war 25 years ago. And yes, that took place 10 years after the actual war. But, but it's nothing about, it's not so much about the war. It's about the love for the game. It's about the passion. It's about the, you know, I call it even in a bad word, I have, you know, poisoned yourself with the ball so you can't get rid of that anymore. And then you're going to even, you go with your bloody head in order to actually win the game, no matter how talented football wise you are, because people speak about, you know, Luca because he's so talented with the ball. Not too many people, you know, say that he's ready to go and break his head to actually do something and take something. Obviously, the talent, the talent consists of more complicated things. It's a situational speed, situational agility, situational strength. I'm going to leave you the presentation later on so you can go into the detail if you really want it. Please, while we're here on this screen, remember this little guy here with the number seven because later on we're going to speak about him later on. 
Also in the domain of technique, evaluating coordination, kinesthetic feeling for the ball, this is what you get in the entry level of the quality, kinesthetic feeling for the ball, smooth movement and a soft touch. Uh, you can right away see the guy that had the ball when he was three, four, five, six, seven, or they just came. No matter how agile, no matter how speed, aggressive, even talented they are, but you can feel they're missing or they're having the smooth movement and the soft touch for the ball. Accuracy, range, functional application. And then later on, we go into the tactics with the decision-making, so-called decision-making uh, that we always go, <laughs> that we're also going to touch today. It's one special topic that I visited during the corona uh, lockdown in the, in the March, April, and May. I had so many presentations all around the planet with all these decision-making uh, uh, things that I'm also going to touch today, giving my opinion, obviously, what I think about it. Also, obviously, personality traits, persistence, tolerance, stability, aggressiveness, courage, involvement, responsibility, all these things, if they're not there, uh, uh, as I said, talent will take you to the top, but those personality traits will keep you on the top. And, uh, and without that, and a lot of them, luckily, luckily, because of the genetical uh, determination, they're genetically inborn, they're genetically determined. So you can see those things at the age of 12, 10 even, even earlier, never mind later, 14, 15, 16. And uh, also appreciate and develop those things, talking about the big obvious development, development things later on. Coach, uh, just as important because only with the player, if there's coach is not there, things will not be, uh, will, not, will not go, you will not be able to utilize their talent to the top. For example, uh, the way I divided it when I was in Dynamo Academy, when we uh, structured the whole thing out, obviously license is something what you need to have. It's a license to work. It's a sign of uh, approval by the by the even by the by the by the by the government because you have to have some kind of a approval education. Uh, a, B, and Pro. We have the UEFA, as you as you all know. Uh, UEFA Pro is. Um, the most demanding uh, in Croatia, if you go from the scratch, from the beginning, uh, UEFA C, UEFA B, UEFA A, UEFA Pro, in the best case scenario. So if you really go day after day, if you really go as fast as you can, it takes you eight and a half years to, uh, to, to make it. Uh, so let's say if you finish your playing career at the age of 20, 25 or whatever, and then you start off right away, there are certain benefits if you play it on a certain level. You can start and you can join at the age of at the, at the, at the B, for example. So you have the uh, they call it, uh, you know, accomp uh, accommodation of the B. So you have let's say half of the B, and then you take it to the A. But still, it you can get you can get it for less than four or five years, no matter how talented player you are. It's one of Boban who uh, or Prosinecki, who is the head coach in in in, in, in Turkish first division right now, took him four or five years to actually get to the UEFA pro level. It divides from the country to the country, but I think UEFA did a good job. I was, uh, for seven years, I was the technical instructor of UEFA and, uh, and, and a member of the first of youth and then later on technical committee. I think they made a really top requirements to actually make things uh, happen. However, however, the license is a uh, license in, for example, out of these 25, 30 coaches you see on the photo, and they're all UEFA pro coaches, only two of them are working professionally on a top level as a pro, as a pro coaches. So out of 23 coaches have the pro license, but they are not good. They're not good enough. So what they're missing, they're missing obviously something. And I always like to say, you know, when people ask me here, the journalists in Croatia as well, before when I was running the academy and, 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 and the federation, you know, how come you guys, you know, you're not producing good enough coaches now. You have Slaven Bilic, he's a West Bromwich. You have Niko Kovac, he's in Monaco. He have a, you have here and there a coach. I was the national team coach up until my last role right now. Uh, where are the rest of the guys? You know, I always say, you know, for example, you have the, you have the medical university here in Croatia as well. And every year, the, 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 for example, 20 new graduate doctors get get graduated from the, from, the, from the university. So, you know, year after year, year after year, you have 100, 200 doctors in the, in the city. But you have, when you have a problem with your knee, when you have a problem with your ankle, you know, everybody talks about these two or one name in the city you should go to. 
Nobody's talking, you know, well, uh, you know, they all have diplomas, go to any, you know, they're, they're all equally good. No, no, they're not. All, they all been to the same education, same process, same diploma, same teachers, same practical work, but there's something more you need to have other than diploma to be a good coach. Also the same thing with the license. So what are those things for me anyway? Personality, if you're the coach with the U7s and U11s, even sooner, and Tom knows that more than I do, you have to have, or you should have the animating, it should be the animator. So you should actually get the things done, get the job done without kids even being aware because they can be aware because they don't have a focus at that time uh, at the age of seven, never mind earlier, uh, to actually get things, get, things, get things done. And you should, be the, you should have yourself the animating personality to actually try to, when I say cheat the kids, not the cheat literally, you know what I mean? To actually get the job done without them, without them knowing you're actually wanting to teach them something. So they have fun, but they're learning at the same time. This is the personality of the coach. If there's a different personality within the coach, because we all have certain personalities, um, for example, the competitive personality wouldn't fit into the spot as a U7s, and sometimes we actually make that happen, and later on you're gonna see how that happens. So this is the coach, for example, of a photo of the guy that should look like that, uh, as, a, as a guy that is an animating personality with the kids at that level. U12 to U16 teacher, so the guy that teaches, has the methodology, goes really structural, you know, follows the, follows the, um, the, 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 the methodology of the weekly cyclists, follows the frequencies. Actually, it's a school. It goes day by day. And then at the age of U17 and on, it's a competitor. If you got a competitive, competitive personality, two competitive personality at the age of seven, eight, and nine, it won't work well. If you got two animating personality at the age of 17, 18, 19, it also won't, won't go well because you should have a proper coaching personality in the proper age group in order to take advantage of the kids as much as possible quickly. We can talk about those things later on if you're gonna have any questions about that. So this is the, com the, the competitive. And, and for example, then, you know, uh, you know the, 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 what happens a lot here, you know, the ex big legendary players, you know, they started with the jobs now, okay, let them go, let them go and coach the kids at the age of seven, eight, nine to start off with a career. And you see they're, they're too fiery, they're too, uh, too aggressive, if you will, because their competitive personality as a player, and now they can't be animating kids around, never mind having the patience, because they want to, as soon as possible, they want to get up on the top and be the head coach of the first team. So just to be careful in the academy where to put and place proper personality. Implementation of demands. Implementation of demands is uh, a quality of the coach to take the best out of the drill. Let's put it this way. Um, you can now on YouTube, you can find millions of drills. There's no secrets anymore. You know, Barcelona does this, those guys do that. Da, 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 da. But is it really only about the drill or is it something about using the proper drill with the proper kids in the proper environment, in the proper phase of the development? And if you use and implement the demand of the drill, you can see what is the difference in the, for example, uh, how, how much of a difference you're gonna make, 100% of a bigger difference will it, will it be if you had a coaches that were taking literally the best out of the drill in the talented kids. If you're just given the drill and say, okay, you guys do it, and then you're gonna see if we're gonna forget about it and having the coffee on the side, it won't work, it won't work. The kid's gonna fall behind and you will not take, I, I like to say, you're gonna take the soul and body out of them in order for them to actually make the drill, being there yelling, shouting, when I say yelling, not necessarily being aggressive, but actually taking and motivating and doing the, doing the job for them. Stability in execution. This is all about the coaches, coaches' personality traits. Stability execution, so being right there all the time. When you feel like it, when you have the fever, when, you, when it's raining, when it's too hot, when you don't like it, when you got in a fight with your wife, when you, you should be there all the time. That's a stability because if the kids are gonna feel you are unstable as the coach and you have today, you don't feel like it and then you're gonna give them the scrimmage so they're gonna be uh, because you not feel like this is not good. They will not, first of all, you're not gonna implement all the demands as a previous requirement. Second of all, you as a coach won't make it down the road because you should be there every single minute of your career. If you wanna really devote yourself professionally as a football coach, right? 
intelligence, emotional. Uh, people feel, you know, people feel it's uh, emotional intelligence, uh, empathy. It's a, it's a control of your and others' emotions as well. Uh, players, I was the head coach. I was head coach of Legia Warsaw, and I was a technical director of the Croatian Federation and the Croatian A national team, and now the, the head coach of the Kuwait national team. And you have some serious players sitting in front of you in a locker room, and believe me, they feel you. They don't. It's not that they understand you, or they hear you, or they or they they know what you're talking about. They f literally feel you. They feel are you are you honest? Are you up to the level? Are you there? Are you there mentally? Are you there physically? Are you there? Emotionally, uh, if they feel you, they will uh, they will follow you. If they don't feel you, they won't. Little simple as that. And uh, and on a, on 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 a on a senior on a senior level, uh, seventy percent is an emotional and, and intellectual and psychological psycholo psychological involvement and direction, and thirty percent is a, is a tactics and, and 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 game organization. A little bit of a tactic technique because you can you can't change a whole lot anymore. It's all about, it's, about, it's, it's a lot about the uh, psychology uh, when you come to that. And obviously, at the end, a uh, sense for the play, and that's a raw talent for the game to have the feeling. You can have all these personality traits, but if you don't have the talent for the game, if you can't read the game, if you don't feel, if you don't see that you're being attacked on, on the right wing position and you got to double up your position and you're going to, uh, obviously, you won't be as good. So, other than the license, you need to have all these other. And this is how I was choosing my coaches in the academy here. Uh, having all these as much as I could, obviously, not all of them had all, but, but uh, license was, okay, sure, yeah, we gotta have the license, but if you had a license, it didn't have anything, any of these. For example, if you were unstable, if you were not implementing, if you were bored on the trainings, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't pay out later on. Competition, quickly about that as well. Competition structure in Croatia, a really small country, as I say, three, four hours this way, three, four hours this way. We have 10 clubs in the first division. Dinamo Zagreb is the best club. I'm from Dinamo, so people from Hajduk will say, no, 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 Hajduk is the best club in the history of Croatia. Could be, maybe, <laughs> numbers-wise, but right now, Dinamo is definitely the big shot in Europe, even right now, for the academy, for everything. And this is how it's being spread out all around. In, in, in the small country as well. This is Bosnia here, this is Slovenia, this is Hungary, this is Serbia, and right across the, uh, the Adriatic Sea, it's Italy right here. So let's say from, from Zagreb to Trieste, which is the first big city in, in Italy, we have a two hour drive by car. So let's say everything is close by. You, want, you can play against Juventus on a literally daily basis and get a friendly game in the afternoon and come back to your home if you want, if you want, uh, as, you, as you want. Being one of the, the, the youngest leagues in Europe, at the, at the average 24.4, um, uh, this answers the question why we produce so much players, so many players, because all the, all the guys being drafted so much and so early that we can actually push the young ones in. So the, the younger ones go so early in that we are one of the youngest youngest. <coughs> leagues in the in the Europe as you as you normally can probably see the oldest leagues are English Premiership Spanish because you you need to have Turkish uh, Russia Italy you need to have Germany a little younger France a little younger that was five years ago though um, because you need to be at the age of 27 8 9 10 uh, 27 8, 9 and 30 in order to be in the most competitive ages for you to actually make a result. That's why it's normal that the big leagues are the oldest leagues in Europe. Uh, something what I'm, what I'm extremely proud of, we had B teams, so we put them in a second and a third league. They, they played competitively. I understand now you guys are gonna have something fall, if I'm not mistaken, you're gonna have the, the, um, the MLS U23 league, from what I understand, I heard is gonna, be, is gonna be probably kicking off or not. I heard something about that. But something what for us was important, it was a U19 National League, U17 National League, and U15 National League, where the kids were traveling all around Croatia and playing against each other. And here already it starts to be very, very, very serious. And here we were already starting to give contracts for the kids. So you cannot now see any kid that means anything in this, on this level, they don't have a contract in either of these clubs already. Those contracts are not professional contracts. We call them assistantship contracts, but they're contracts. You can't get, you can't take the player away from a club to a club 
unless you have a transfer fee or 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 uh, or a uh, uh, any kind of a transfer allowance. Uh, but uh, but uh, clubs want to product pro protect themselves because we are the EU right now, and at the age of 16, meaning from here, the kids can go and play in any European club in Europe, and that's why. Believe me, literally, the scout of Arsenal FC, he lives in Zagreb last 15, 20 years. Not comes every once in a while, he lives in the area, covering the entire Balkans, Bosnia, Serbia, Macedonia, obviously Croatia, and Slovenia. So not only them, but all the other guys, all the big clubs as well, because as soon as the talent comes to the age of 15, 16, 17, you want to hit the guy it, when he's 1 million rather than 25 in a couple of years, if you get a ch actually a chance to actually buy him when he gets on a serious, on a serious level. Development program, probably you've seen the book, uh, at least seen the, the cover of that. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm extremely sorry. Well, sorry. I, I did make quite a few copies and lately I was so busy with other things that I had in my life as a professional career. So I wasn't this into making other copies and I'm getting on a daily basis requests for, for, for new. So I will make sure uh, Paul to uh, to send you. I think I have on a personal personal savings some somehow not savings the uh, the, the, the saving couple of copies. I think a couple of fifty of them. So I will make sure I send you uh, I send you uh, a certain number of the of the of the books so you have it for your your uh, people that you want to share the book with or or it's going to be up to you. Uh, development program was uh, from the book, for example, something what we extremely found very important that was technique it was all about technique uh, elementary technique dynamic technique functional technique individual tactics and then later on team tactics having as i said the entry level as strong as possible but later on we were trying to take this entry level even higher and that's when we actually get it so so high one thing that always amazed me and that's when all these debates came from in the corona lockdown time when I heard so much, you know, even, even, even in the States, I mean, even I got to be honest, even in the States, I, I hear it a lot at the age of U9, you know, you know, four, four, two, or, you know, let's three, five, two tactics, step, 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 step. You know, we have so much time at the, you know, in, 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 from the ages of 14 and on to actually get them, get them, get them going. So they're going to be educated on a tactical level to the perfection if they do that. But if they miss the window and that window goes from the U literally three, uh, because, well, the one little, which is unfortunate, at the age of U3, you don't know if the guy is going to be a piano player or a soccer player. However, you should actually get them being comfortable with the ball as early as possible. And then if he gets this talent, which you see at the age of four, five, six, and seven, then obvious you pick him and then they, they, they go soccer way. Uh, but, but, but to go this early into the decision-making drills, into the tactical, into the game-winning situations, into the organization, for me, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a really passionate guy, and I sometimes use the words that I regret later on. But for me, that's crazy. That's, that doesn't, doesn't, uh, that doesn't, uh, what happens is uh, at the age of 10, yes, you mean something, you do something, you, 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 you have some kind of a weight in the, in, in the soccer society, wherever you're from, but at the age of 15, those guys disappear they fall behind so much because they you don't even know where they where, where they play anymore they quit to the age of 16 because they are not comfortable with the ball anymore and then when it gets really tough against them and it gets tougher and tougher uh then they they uh they quit so uh for us the investment in the technical area and i'm later on see gonna gonna say why i'm so against the decision making drills in the in the early ages this early ages, um, I'm going to actually be, be curious to hear you out as well, uh, what your opinions are. Uh, if you go in the one, one, one stable development scale, a U9, you have the coordination and speed in the beginning, the strength and endurance, uh, animation as early as possible, and learning individual with the ball. As I say, I put it here because of the academy purposes from the U9, but it goes up until the U5. Uh, in Dinamo Zagreb, we start at U6 and U7, uh, not organized, obviously, early, but the kids, obviously, in the schools, they have the soccer and the football, so they're actually taking it, not, not, not every single day, but they get the ball, they fall in love with the ball. Uh, learning in a group, and then their competition. So competition, the organized competition, competition, when I say competition, competition, we have here as well competition. But the consequences 
of, of not winning the game here are completely different than the consequences of not winning the game here. Here is going to be okay, guys. It was really bad. Okay, well, bad. It was. It was. It was not bad. Let's move on. Good job. Give me five. But here it should be different. It should be. <clears throat> you know what? Here it's going to be okay. Okay. Now I'm here. U19. It should be even more serious. I'm going to tell you a couple examples that I had with the kids when Luka Modic, for example, was 19, and that was not no, not a pleasant word. Why? Because at the end of this arrow here, and they're 21, 22, 23, this matters. It's, it's a big money involved, it's a survival, it's a professional world, and it's not about, listen, I don't feel like it. No, no, you have to be feeling like it every single day. That's why the consequences and the feedback about not winning the game here are different than here. Here is everything about the animation, about the fun and everything. Later on, it becomes something a lot more serious. Technique, technique, and tactics, tactics kicking off more individual, individual. And then later on like that. Formation of the programs, application, application. We're going to go speed up a bit. Periodization, something was very important. You have all these things lined up in a book. I'm going to, uh, there's a lot of things I want to show you, so I'm going to try to speed up a bit now. Elementary technique, dynamic technique, dynamic. So for me, this part is something what I wanted to, formation of the technical and tactical programs, programs which is, which is something what is sane for us here because with, if you're not comfortable with the ball you cannot deal with the problem problem solving tasks on the field that you're that you're facing later on in the game because you're going to be missing a tool to do it with uh something what we i also must say um okay i was the one pushing it and, 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 and pushing it through in federation, organizing the national development camps. Every county, we have 21 county, a lot less than you guys in the States. Um, those counties were very popular a couple of days ago when the election was taking place, I heard. I didn't even know how many counties there were in the States, but I heard this county here, this county there, obviously joking, wasn't into politics, but it was, it was so, even we followed it all when the elections took place now with, the, with Biden and Trump. Uh, we have 21 county here in Croatia. Every county had their national development camp, which wasn't a big facility kind of thing, state of the art, but it was a local club that was had a hand from the Federation. And I had an instructor over there and we were gathering the young kids, the younger, those were the photos from those national development camps. Those were primarily the villages, not even the cities, the villages where the younger and younger kids, even less than five, six, seven, were 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 taking place and for example this is the ns this is like the nogomet this is like the football uh football center osiek osiek is one of the biggest club or the, the cities and then was the national training camp and all around and the kids were there they were detected and they were trained uh not too many times it was twice a month why twice a month so we can gather all the coaches from the county so we can get all the talented kids from the county give them the information, let them go back to the clubs, let them work, and then call them back again in one month. And then you can easily have detection of the most talented kids. They can't escape. You know, you can't be missing any single kid later on. So today, I'm not going to be talking about the drills as much. I'm going to be talking about the why and when, and so I understand the point of how to actually make something happen. Again, talented player. Uh, um, as, you, as you probably know, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, just quickly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this because it's extremely interesting. The, the FIFA was making a survey about how many, how many people play football in the world, right? And they came up with a number, 265 million people playing football all around, out of which, you know, players, completely total number. In UEFA, 62 million. Registered, 38 million. Overall, in UEFA, 21 million. Professionals, 113,000 overall in the world. So that's probably Mexico, even obviously in the States, a lot of professional contracts, South America, Japan, China, I don't know, elsewhere. In Europe, around 60,000 professional contracts players play. So out of, the, out of the 265 million people playing football, 113,000 have professional contracts. So not too, not too much of a... Not too much of a percentage to actually to actually make it make it as a professional out of the out of the number that it is. So we have the women, we have the veterans, kids, uh, you know, all these co-eds, every, everybody who plays football, officially, unofficially. You know, this is those are the numbers. And myself, I wanted to make a, I wanted to make a uh, some kind of a some kind of a research 
out of all these players that play, out of all these, for example, obviously 60,000 in Europe, 60,000 professional contracts, who are the players that have the strong, strong, strong dominance of the better foot? Why? And what I mean by that, I mean that 90% of the time they use the better foot as opposed to the weak foot in any given situation of the field. So let's say nine out of 10 times they use the better foot, no matter in the situation they are. And they're still keeping up on the top level, being successful, only using their dominant better foot. And I think we all know who one guy is. I think we know the second guy. And I think we're gonna agree about most of the names, Robin, Bale, maybe who else, Pirlo was one of the guys. Uh, I was trying to actually put, put some other guys in there. Maybe I missed a few names here and there. Uh, Hazard, I wouldn't put into this. Hazard is using maybe not equally, but the percentage is definitely different. So the top, top, top guys in Europe, top guys in the world that are, that are, that are the best players in the world, but using the strong dominance of the better foot here. Maybe you're going to come up with a couple of other five, ten names. But they have to be they have to be successful on the on on the planetary level, which is the UEFA and obviously the professional contract requirement that they have. As opposed to the 50-50 use, which I also agree, other than maybe Xavi and Iniesta, who also for me changed my football perspective because that was something amazing what happened when they played, right? But I don't think the reality is not 50-50. I think this is the reality. I think the reality is 60-70% of the usage of the better foot and 30 to 40% usage of the weak foot. And that is exactly how it is. 95% of the players that are playing soccer successfully with the professional contracts in UEFA are using the better foot 60-70% and 30-40% the weak foot. Uh, that means that they still have to be using the weak foot as well. Because I hear, you know, when he, you know, you know, he's got, no, let him do it, let him, let, because he's talented, he's very talented, he's gonna do the job. Those 10 guys are gonna do the job, but not too much more many of them than all these 10 that we have here. Uh, a lot more of them, not a lot more. So let's say 56 million uh, thousand of the professional contract players are being good as they should supposed to be, Having, having this percentage of the usage of their fit, uh, feet. Now, <clears throat> the guy that I told you about, something very interesting. I don't know if you, if you ever, uh, but I'm, I think I'm gonna, with this, with this I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing and, I'm, and, I, and I really wanna open some eyes about a talent of the player because believe me, I, I finished my master's degree in the States. I've been there really lots, presented at many conferences in the state. And every once in a while, even now, even nowadays, people go, you know, I have this talented, amazing player. And uh, <clears throat> the guy that I, that I showed you the photo of on the previous slide, we had a Croatian jersey, another number seven in the back. Uh, I was academy director of Dinamo Zagreb Academy, and, and, and all of a sudden, at the age of nine, you know, there's this guy, he showed up. That was something where I've never seen in my life. You know, I, I thought to myself, listen, what the hell is that? I mean, the guy's, the guy's, the guy's crazy. This is, I've never seen that. So his name was... Uh, Alan Khalilovic, and this is the guy. And very quickly, at the age of nine, he became on the tournaments around Europe, he became the number one player. That was amazing. So when people tell me at the age of 10, I have a talented player, I want you to hear this out first and then, and then, and then, and then move on with the talent prediction. As the time went on, my boss calls me and says, listen, what is, what, what's going on with this little guy down there here? Everybody's talking about him. I said, boss, listen, I can't believe this. I mean, I've never seen this in my life. The guy is unbelievable. Very soon, he became the captain of all Croatian youth national teams. Very soon, he became the best player of Croatia and the youth we've ever had. Very soon, he became the youngest player of Dinamo Zagreb first team. He, at the age of 16, he scored on the first, on official match for Dinamo Zagreb Academy. He, he became the, the, the younger guy with the cap with the senior national team at the age of 16. That was something spectacular. And very soon he became, he got the invitation for the Croatian first national team alongside with the guy that you can recognize with. Uh, so following that, I mean, at the age of nine, I saw that this is, and, and the whole, at the age of 12 already, now that, that was at the age of 17 when he was in the first national team already, he got the invitation at the age of 17 for the first national team. Uh, at the age of 12 already, Barcelona, 
who already made some phone calls to me to 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 the academy. Listen, what about this guy? Who the obviously we'll lock the guy up right away with the contracts. He couldn't go anywhere. But as the times went on, he, as you can see him here with the Modric, with the with the pair with the Mateo Kovacic, Rakitic, Mandzukic, and all the guys, he was in the starting lineup very soon at the age of 18 the youngest Croatian player ever playing for the Croatian starting lineup in, 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 in the Croatian first national team. Something unbelievable that I've never seen with my life in the, in, in, in before. Obviously, as the thing went on, Barcelona confirmed signing of Croatia, Wunderkind Alen Halilovic, uh, next line of Messi, how Barcelona beat us, la, 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 la. and Alen Halilovic signs, obviously, for Barcelona, and playing for Barcelona, obviously together with the guys and it doesn't get much farther than this photo i think so what i wanted to say uh when when i hear you know i have this unbelievably talented guy at the age of 10 or 11 this if if it's such a talent believe me the manchester city or barcelona or even us Everybody should hear about the guy, even if he's from, doesn't matter, from Rio de Janeiro or from Houston or from, from, from elsewhere. This is how the scouting network already works. So being very careful about this, how talented, how talented this guy is or no, no, or he has it all. He doesn't have to work anymore. He doesn't have to improve because he is talented. If anybody was talented, believe me, this guy was talented. And obviously this shows how talented he was signing for Barcelona at the age of 18 or 19, if I'm not mistaken. This is him. This is him. Just a quickly, this is him, him, number 10, obviously, and the captain of the Croatian national. There, there was the U17 World Cup. Unbelievable speed, left Just foot, really everything, average, everything. Center, but take a look at his way of controlling the ball. Uh, left, time. left, 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 left. The reason I'm saying this, the percentages of the top level guys who can survive on a top level football using the strong dominance of the foot, not too many of them. Alan Khalilovic today, check this out. Dinamo Zagreb, FC Barcelona B, FC Barcelona B, FC Barcelona. Barcelona, Sporting Gijon, on, this is from the transfer market. From the Bar from Sporting Gijon, Loan, loan, loan to Hamburger Sportverein, loan Hamburger to Las Palmas, loan, tup, tup, end of loan, free transfer AC Milan, tup, standard milieu, tup, 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 end of loan. Today, I would have shown you the news in Croatian newspapers five days ago, he's 23, five days ago, he trains, he is training, he's practicing in the second division club, who just like 20 kilometers from the place that I'm right now, Second division club, the coach, coach knows him and because he cannot find the club. At the age of 23, the guy that you saw what did and who, he, who, 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 got, he, who got he bought by, <coughs> at the age of 23, he can't find the club. And take a look at the, this loan, end of loan, end of loan, free, free transfer, loan, 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 loan. And Barcelona got him in the beginning. That means something is wrong. Something sucks, part of my language. Something is not right as it's supposed to be, but at the age of 10, he was the best player of Europe. At the age of 12, he was the best player of Europe. At the age of 14, he was the best player of Europe. And that means something. And, and now at the age of 23, he can't play football. He does play, uh, but he can't find the club. He's training in the second division club here in Croatia. We're going to come back to that in a second. In the, when I was the technical director of Federation, we played a game against Spain, Croatia, Croatia against Spain. We were 1-0 down. And take a look at this number eight player. Take a look at his six passes that he did. It's Croatian language, so, so forget that uh, when, the, when the commentator is speaking about it. But take a look at the six passes of this guy, what he does. So this guy, one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
This is Koke. Atletico Madrid here, everybody. I think you guys know Koke, right? He was playing for the U21. We had the, we the game, uh, U21s. Uh, we lost the game 1-0 against Spain. He was then there. He was a young guy. He was 19 at that time. Now he works in transfer market around 70 million euro in transfer mark. Uh, well, and I watched the game with the, with the Hines Melendez. He's a good friend of mine. He's the technical director of the, of the Spanish FA. I said, listen, Hines, what, 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 what is that? I mean, okay. Now, also the question for us, you've seen the talent a little while ago, and now you see Koke playing those six passes. Okay, he's not playing, obviously, those six passes all the time like that, right? But he worth 70 million dollar, uh, euro, playing for Atletico Madrid starting lineup, uh, Spanish A national team now, and playing football roughly or generally the way you saw it. So what is talent? What is talent at the end of the day? So how do you define the talent and what, what you should be looking for? Obviously, neither of those both two things that you just saw to the extreme like that, but something in the middle, something in the middle connected with the personality traits obviously is going gonna, is gonna to be the answer of the solution that we, that we deal with. Uh, we're going to come back to that again. Let's go a bit now, now into science, so we're, we're getting close to the end. Many of our choices are constrained by past patterns. It has been estimated that we are only 10% aware of what we do. The mind is roughly 10% conscious and 90% unconscious. Unaware, we eventually fall into comfort zone. So past patterns are the knowledges we have, and the past patterns are the memory. So how do we form the, when coach, Coaches tell me, you know, I'm going to teach this guy something. If you say you're going to teach the guy something, that means he has to memorize something. And in order for him to memorize something, you got to be aware how the memorizing functions, how the memorizing works. All these things are actually taken from the researches of the very, very, uh, very respectable works, Oxford University and, and, and elsewhere. Memory is divided in two memories, conscious and unconscious. Conscious memory goes in a declarative memory for facts and for the events, but memory for skills is unconscious memory. That means we consciously think about what we want to do, our decision, but we subconsciously use the skills to do it with. So when you have the kids at the age of seven or eight or nine, and you let them, okay, let them do decisions. And by choosing the decisions, they're going to develop the skills. They will not develop the skills. They will use the skills that they have formed or not formed because they're subconsciously using the skills to solve the problems with. Unless we put the programs or the past patterns into their memory, they will be using the very restrictive and limited range of tools in order to solve the decision-making problems. That's a just biological and psychological fact. If you go deeper into that and you have a technical skill, no matter of a dribbling move or a shot from Ronaldo, it's a motor action. Motor action, it's a motor program, which is called engram. Every engram is a pattern of cognitive information inside the brain who is also called a memory trace. It's a literally formation, it's a random, every motor skill program, when you're shifting, you guys don't have that in the States. Here in Croatia, we, have, we don't have the automatic shift, we have those sticks, we have the manual still. You don't think about, now I'm gonna press the clutch, now I'm gonna press the brake, you just, you wanna turn left, and then you do it automatically. You don't think about what you're gonna do. If you have formed that knowledge, if you haven't, then obviously it's a problem. So brain forms a random pattern of the neurons that are connected with the synapses, and that is one skill. And that is one skill. The stronger the synapses are the connections between the neurons. The stronger between, the stronger the synapses connections between the neurons, the stronger the pattern of the given skill is. So the changes in the strength, this is the key word, the changes in the strength of the connections between neurons, synapses in the brain is how memories are formed. So you cannot now tell the kids at the age of seven, okay, guys, now we're going to be having decision-making things. Now you make a decision and you're going to be developing the skill. No, no, you're going to be using the, 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 the tools 
that you have priorly formed and you cannot form them because they're not the, the connections between the between the given pattern of the given skills are very fragile and if you go and morphological changes even take place later on you're going to see how so the learning process anger and formation and strengthening the synapse connection happens only with the active and conscious involvement repetition of the person so it has to be repetition if the repetition doesn't take place it will not be it, the synapses will not be strengthening in between the neurons the way it is people even go farther than that that you should inhibit the muscles which should not be in the pattern as it is important for the excitation of the muscles which participate in the pattern so the the more precise the more precise the element the technical element performance is the stronger the stronger formation of the element will be so it's not about the repetition it's about the precise repetition where the where the engram synapses are strengthening 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 and then they become something what is formed in the memory as their tool as their knowledge as their memory pattern what we saw before that you subconsciously take out of your brain memory back so if the trained and performed activity has been precise, the Engram model will be precise. If trained performance is rough, the Engram model will be rough and unprecise and therefore unreliable. That means you have a given situation in the field and you want to make a turn, you want to make a dribbling. Sometime, one time, you're going to do it this way, but when the, when, the, when the opponent changes, when the guy gets tougher, when the guy steps you on, you're going to be you're going to be using a fragile and unreliable technique, which is not going to be functionally efficient to solve the problem on the field. That's why it is completely unrealistic, unrealistic to actually do those things. Physically, biochemically, the changes happen with the neurons in the given action neurons and changing from a neuron to neuron. And those synapses are actually strengthening and, and, and with one or those proteins that go from the, from the synapse to the synapse, it becomes more and more synapses with the neural transmitter released and they are actually enlarging the number of the proteins going back and forth back and forth back and forth and it becomes a stronger connections and that is what tom's always saying on the twitter that i follow you know fire and wire together because this is a pattern this is a a random pattern that brain out of the hundred million or billion, if I'm not mistaken, billion neurons all around on the gray matter and the white matter, they choose random for any motor move that we do. When you eat a soup with a spoon, mo mo a brain knows because there's a program in the brain of the motor skill because it has to be this precise because if it's not this precise as a kid, imagine how when you were a kid, when you were eating the soup by yourself and your mom gave you the spoon, okay, how many times you were, you know, you, 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 were, you were having the soup, you know, taken with your whole palm like that and you were, you know, burning yourself and then slowly as the years went on, went on, went on, went on, now you go nice and easy, you can eat easy, you know, sip, sip the little bit, bit of a, you know, a couple of drops of the soup before you actually get yourself burned, how precise the motor program has to be. But you don't go too early with this because you cannot form it unless it's a stable repetition. Let's let's take a look at the example on one turn. Take a look at this play again. Step, one more time. Turn here. Take a look at the turn. Was, was the player thinking about, okay, now I'm going to turn and I'm going to put my left foot there and my right foot there. No, no. He saw, he saw the space and he wanted to use this space here but not thinking about the actual. So he was thinking about the decision, but he was not thinking about the technical movement, physical movement of the body that he's going to do it with. And then obviously it goes nice and smooth. Another example, take a look at another player. Take a look at this one. Take a look at this player. Take a look at this. One, stop, stop. So he's right footed. I know the guy very well. He was the captain of the club. Three touches, how unreliable, how fragile, and how inconsistent the movement is. The same, the same, the same element, turning with the ball. It, never mind, Sudani. never mind having the three players around him, around him later on in the top game. He was alone, pretty much alone. This is a fragile technical element because it wasn't, 
the, 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 the synapses, the, the, the pattern wasn't, it's not, still not strong. It's a better foot, never mind the weak foot. And he, he was the captain at that time. And obviously he doesn't play the serious football on the level that he should. So at that time, at that time, you should be, so when we come back to Halilovic, about his talent, about everything, take a look at his restrictions in the game. Take a look, this is him, left foot. Okay, left foot, fine. That's him, take a look at this now. Just follow, follow. So the, so his left foot is so strongly dominant outside that he doesn't even care about, about controlling the ball with the right foot inside part in order to control the ball because his left foot, his, his, his strong dominance is so strong that he, and I was the first to blame because I thought this is something, I mean, I was 20, 20 years younger than myself as well. Uh, listen, that's a God-given, God-given prospect that, you know, when Messi says one day, I'm, I don't want to play anymore, the guy's going to be there with the left foot making miracles. It doesn't go that easy because obviously with his such a weak, such a weak, uh, 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 his, his, his strength, his left foot became his weakness because he was so strong with it that he didn't bother about anything else. And when it comes to the level, take a look how it goes. <laughs> And how many ball and then, and then slowly by slowly by slowly by slowly by slowly slowly by slowly he goes he goes like that. Another example, even better one. That's him here. Take a look. Take a look. He turns. He turns. Check this out. So he turns. He turns on the home. Take a look at what would happen if he controlled the ball here with his right. Take a look at the space here. Take a look at the space here. Controlling the ball with his right foot and going forward. No, his left foot is so strong that he wants to go even home between two players with his left foot. Take a look at this. This is crazy. This is crazy. And he was the captain at that time. And obviously what happens, obviously what happens, people take him on, people take him on. Because of his talent, his talent took him to Barcelona, but his personality of the ability to change those things, to focus and to change those things, took him down. And now he doesn't have the club at the age of 23. So the formation of the programs in this, in this, in this area is most important. Why? Because the correlation between the coordination and speed is unbelievable here in this area. That's why uh, Tom also, when I hear him millions of times, proposes about getting technique as early as possible because coordination and speed and correlation between those two things is amazing in this part. Here, you can do that as much as you want. You won't pick up anymore. And for us, for example, you know, when the kids do that, stably, stable repetition, stable repetition, tup, 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 and you go, stable repetition, and you go. And stable repetition, and go, and millions of times until you don't think about this anymore because the motor skill is going to be chosen out of the out of the out of the memory. The same thing in different sports. Just an example. Just a quick example. Take a look at here. It's in English. Orange cord, however, the players need to turn sideways to the net with their feet about shoulder width apart. Make sure the player has a big space between. Make them sure beforehand. precisely, precisely the same thing in your biggest, I think, sport over there. It's, I mean, Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan, but it doesn't happen that kids have to go and, you know, stably, and then, and then millions of times, millions of times, millions of times, millions of times, millions of times. Also, later on, here. All the way back. I mean, this, those guys are 14 or 15. Yes, making decisions, but he's got to be technically super. Handle it, handle it, handle it, handle it. And then you go. Hands up the knee, chest up. And then, and then even later on you go, and then you later More on, making those, Good. Up, up, making those, making those patterns, making those Good. patterns Good. until exactly. you have it hey, subconsciously exactly. taken care of. After you have done this, then you go in the application of the program. So you have to form the program first. Application of the programs in the ease conditions. That means that you gotta correct and adjust given program that you made. 
So formation of the motor habit is what is expected and what is achieved. It's a adaptation of the body to the something different would happen. So you got, the, you got this done in the straight conditions without any opponents, and then later on there's an opponent coming, so you have to adjust your technique. But this is it. The better and stronger the motor engram which memorized and stored, the less corrections and easier adjustment to new spatial and dynamics circumstances will take place. This is, for example, the previous technical element with the guy that is bothering you being on your way. This is how it is. This is how it is uh, slowly, slowly, slowly. And then you put the guy in a 2v2, 3v3, 4v3, and then he is making the thing and taking out of it. Don't, according to my experience, according to the, the do, do not make it a U10s or U11s uh, ultimate goal of the quality, what you want it to be in your players. It's not even 15. The way the guy is going to look at age of 25 is your goal. If he's not going to be looking the, the way he's supposed to be, he's not going to be like that. So this is the, and we're finishing three more slides, we're done. 1% of the population we've seen, those are the extreme talents. Those extreme talents, however, extreme talents in a full talented range, already formed motor programs because they have been talent, got given. They already have those synapses strong that this is a talent this is a talent already formed genetically formed synapses between the neurons for the giving technical element still emphasize on the strengths adjustments and corrections fill minor knowledge gaps population of big talents 2.5 percent of them already formed uh, emphasize on the strengths adjustments and corrections form knowledge and gaps population of talents but we have here population of not as talented and don't get me wrong, guys, in the States, I think on, the, on, 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 a, on a big number population, I think we're mostly dealing with the population. Yes, every once in a while, there's extreme talent. Yes, there's a big talents. But I think we're dealing also a lot with a not as talented population in the whole as a, gener as, as a world measure of the talent. And this is this. And this is this. Those guys have to be working like this. Uh, just as a, as a psych scientific confirmation about, about the, the constraints-led perspective to understanding skill acquisition and gameplay, you will never hear or read, if you do, please send it to me, that, you, that, that somebody quoted and somebody found out that you can develop a technical element in the decision-making games if you go early. You can always adapt movement pattern. You can never develop. You can always invent novel adaptations to solve typical problems. All the works go like that. Here, you will always spontaneous use here. You can always create a pattern randomly constructed. You can always adapt and can organize itself. You can never physically develop a new technical element in the unorganized. So for me, a couple of key conclusions are we cannot develop stable program in unstable motorical conditions. Decision-making drills do not form initial technique, but they can improve and adjust already formed technique, which is up to the level population talent stage. If not direct otherwise, skill, children use their comfort zone skills, which we saw 90% of the memory patterns are used subconsciously and they use something what they have already formed, if they had it formed already. Are they always the right choice? Formed skills will become their comfort zone. Talent is genetically already formed strong skill, and we can implement situational training decision making, but we have to be aware of the functionality of the talent as we saw with this Alem Little Khalilovich guy, how functional or not functional his talent was. If notice that during small situational drills, kids use wrong technique to achieve good decisions, stop it and correct it because with the wrong technique, they will 99% not be able to achieve good decision when it matters, and it matters at the age of 25, not at the age of 10. It matters, at the, when I say 25, I don't mean necessarily 25, it's gonna be 23 or 27, but when they're a senior professional, professional player. This is the whole population situation, and then you have application of the program in situational, this is when you use that. Uh, for example, take a look at Barcelona in, uh, in a three more, actually I think two more, two more slides I have. Barcelona, Barcelona, this is, this is Van Gaal. But Van, Van Gaal was using, was using pattern, not decision-making drills. Just making sure, even in the first Barcelona team, using the, using the circular drills, using the non, 
non-oppositional drills. They call it non-decision making board drill. They don't develop anything. So when <laughs> when when people go easy or people say, you know, Romeo, you don't like decision making drills. I was the head coach of the Kuwait national team. This is this is we had a training uh, camp in London last summer. This is the Kuwait national team, and, and, I, and I was running the session. This is the this is the situational drill for decision making. Part of my yelling. Bravo. Uh huh. That's better. That's better. So That's we're better. so we're not using unopposed better. training with that the national better. team players. Stop! Stop! Talk to, talk, talk to each other. Talk to each other. Wait! Help! 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 Opa! Bravo, Dafiri! Bravo, Dafiri! And, and this is the situational training. So nobody is Two falling people. for craziness that you are not using decision-making game. This is the Legia Warsaw training session when I was a head coach two years ago, uh, four, four, three years ago of the Legia, of the Legia Warsaw national team. This is also opposed training uh, with a decision-making drill, having the players with the average age of 26. But when you have the kids at the age of seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're beginning with that, it has to be technique, 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 because the sensitive phase is the, the most sensitive for these guys at this ages. Whew, I'm sweating here on this side, Paul. I don't, I don't know if I took it a bit longer than 45 minutes. Sorry, I got a little carried away. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you hear you hear me all well. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was great, Romeo. Um, Fantastic. We've got a number of questions in the chat. Uh, maybe that's a good place to start. Give you a, or we can also give you a breather as well. <laughs> well, I'm fine. Um, I'm just going to get some water because I completely drain <laughs> this my throat. Well, there's a lot in there, um, you know. And I, I took I took some notes, things that I kind of wrote down that that you touched upon that resonated with me was the the technique as early as possible. And how how that um, is so important for the kids, you know, and not just repetition, but precise repetition. Precise repetition, exactly. I think one of my first memories as a kid in the game was my father. When I was probably about five years old, he was. We were passing back and forth with my father, and he he actually, you know, was correcting me on where my plant foot should be when I was passing the ball, he was a tennis coach or he coached tennis on the side, but he was really into coaching technique. And so he would, he would, you know, he would adjust my, my foot, my plant foot, the non-passing foot, you know, to point at my target, he'd score at my shoulders. I remember that from age five, him actually moving my foot. And, you know, I see a lot of times where, you know, you know, even we're, out there, I was out at youth games this weekend watching youth games in Houston, and I was watching warm-ups where the kids were passing the ball back and forth literally hundreds of times in the warm-up. And quite honestly, the reality was a lot of them were doing non-precise technique, you know, so they weren't really focused on the little details of, you know, where the, sh the foot should be, how to follow through. So I guess is that what you mean by more precise technique? Because they're reinforcing these kind of general, general techniques, which might not be ideal for the, the habits that they want to form. I mean, I mean, you said it yourself, Paul. Now, imagine if they're having no opposition and they have a hard time in a warm-up, not using the proper technique, passing the ball to each other. What is going to be when the when the real opponent comes down the road and when when they get pressed on and they're back and they gotta make a pass and and uh, and obviously, a starting point maybe is different with the talent, the initial talent in, 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 on the level that the kid is at. But uh, this is exactly what I'm trying to say. The, 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 the trying to, I mean, the, you know, the, the, I mean, I, I really, I, I don't live in the States, but really go often. And I know that you have a problem with, the, you know, training being fun. You know, if it's not fun and, and, and then you're going to lose kids or you're going to lose but it's about the coach to make the good training session when they're going to teach the kids proper things but still for the training to be fun because i know kids are exposed you know for example i was in i heard one of the coaches from canada i was i was in canada 15 years ago i was i was the coach of one regional 
one regional association. And hear this out. I mean, that, that struck me like so, so much that I couldn't believe it. I was in, it was in a, I'm not even going to say where it was. It was for one year, I was a regional director of development and one northern, just out of the blue, it came along and I took it as an adventure. And they took me on a TV over there, and, that, and because they didn't have the facility, indoor facility, they had the outdoor, they, they had the, uh, they, they just had the outdoor season. And they said, okay, coach, you know what? You know, we have the outdoor season, indoor season, and, and, and in, the, in, the, in the outdoor season, we have, out of the three months of the outdoor season, we have one training per week and two games per week. So we make kids having fun. And, you know, when, how do we expect us to be on the world level, like improving and everything? And I said, okay, listen, if I'm not mistaken, you said you have the outdoor season, indoor season. Said, yes. So the outdoor season is three months. He said, yes. So you have one training a week and two games. He said, yes. That means you have 12 training sessions a year because you have three months. You have one, one training session a week and you have 12 training sessions a year. He goes, right. I'm like, like, are you still going to continue your question? Or is, is that what you want to ask me? You want to, you want to finish your question? Like, what, what, but can I ask you a question now on the other side? How many times your hockey players train? And the guy on the other side says, you know, some of them, the most talented ones, they train even 12 times a week. So you're the world champions, more or less. Don't get me wrong. You're the best in the world in the hockey. You know what is the recipe. You know what is the actual uh, procedure of making things happen having the training sessions at the six o'clock in the morning. So you brought me from Europe now trying to answer the question, how come with the 12 training sessions in a year, you want to be the world champion? So that's exactly what I'm trying to say. It has to be about the technique. And I, and I see, and I'm very glad Tom is still awake here. Tom, uh, you didn't fall asleep, which I'm happy. Uh, it's all about, well, not all about, but the starting point, it's never too late uh, as they say, you know, let's start with the tactics because the kids are not going to learn. They will learn at the age of 14, 15, 16, believe me, enough of tactical knowledge is, because tactics is discipline. Tactics is, I call it mathematics. You know, you got to be organizing yourself, placing yourself, do, do, do literally linear on the field as you're supposed to. But if you miss the window and that window starts very, very early, you will never going to be as you want it to be. Never. Now, culture is a kicking point in the beginning. Now, to create a culture in the non-soccer cultural environment, I don't know, Tom is dealing with those problems more than I do, so I don't know, I don't know how to actually solve those problems. All I know that you cannot make it if you don't have it that way, right? But now, how to make a soccer culture? I don't know as much as he does, but you cannot. Without technique, you cannot. Romeo got a bunch of questions here. Um, so I'll just start to read them off. Got one from Joan Olivia from um, Dynamo and Lafayette. He asked, how do you evaluate the development? And I, I texted back and forth with him. I don't know if Joan is still on there, but in regards to like the individual development. So I guess um, your example of Alan uh, Halilovic? Yeah, Halilovic. Halilovic. Did, did, do you feel like maybe he was let down on the coaching side that no one really forced him or, or directed him to but that's a beautiful, develop the that's right a foot question. or that's a beautiful whatever question. it was during those years? I know, I know exactly which, and, and everybody asked me that. And believe me, but you know what? First of all, I was 15 years younger. And second of all, uh, you know, <laughs> Paul, believe me, it's not easy when you see the kids that is nine years old and that is taking a 12-year-old kids one against five and making yeah. six goals and, and solving and Barcelona calling. Like, what are you going to say to this guy? Like, what are you going to tell him? No, 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 guy. No, no, no. You go. The guy, was, the guy was killing everybody in front of themselves. Barcelona offered us one million euro when he was 12 already not knowing all these things. Uh, now, yes, now I know somebody should have hold the guy, you know, pulling his ear and say, listen, boom, 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 guy, get yourself organized. This, his, 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 his pattern of technique is so strong that it is too strong. This is one evidence of how your ec extreme talent, because he was obviously extremely talented in one way, became his weakness 
other than other than personality traits of the of the folds around your head that you saw in the beginning that the players had and that he didn't have as much and that is one of the things for sure but of course the answer is yes but then at the end of at, 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 at that time believe me i was the academy director i i wasn't i wasn't i couldn't i wasn't uh, i didn't dare to actually step in and say something because the guy was you know wherever he shows up he was he was uh, he was unbelievable and that was something what he was touching the ball with his right foot every once in a while but that was so dominant so that's why i'm so careful when people tell me you know i have a talented kid because the talent that i saw at that time that was something you know we played against barcelona in the u9 in the tournament you know we beat barcelona 5-1 in vienna in the u9s you know he killed everybody there you know he was he was in the finals he, so he was so dominant that i thought to myself this is the maradona you know as he was at the age of 10 i, I don't know what maradona looked like when he was 10 or messi but that was something spectacular right i mean imagine the being being taken by barcelona at the age of 17 and then playing the, against you know with messi or something so but yes now now when i go back now i'm wiser but then uh, i was 15 years also younger not as experienced or knowledgeable if you will tom what do you say i'm just unmuting myself yeah no i mean it, 100% i mean every, everything same but again you know it comes with experience right i mean even myself now i'm 59 i'll be 60 in a couple of weeks here um and i feel like i'm just getting started again because of the knowledge that i've acquired over the and and the observation that's really what it is i've been very fortunate because of the way my career went and i focused as a purely technical coach that i've literally observed hundreds of thousands of kids at play so you have a different perspective and it's again that whole idea of mind of uh, uh, you know that mindset of of always growing and learning um and that's what what really coaching is about right i mean we we evolve as well as coaches just as the players evolve sometimes it you know you might evolve a little bit quicker and you can get, have those insights a little bit quicker but usually it takes time to develop um and that's why it's great to have these kind of of these kind of uh, sharing of your knowledge um working at the you know how your career turned out and working so long at a club like you know Dynamo Zagreb where the talent is just overflowing but it's almost there's almost too much talent and 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 you get that perception that there's just so many great players but what you're showing us is that yeah there's so many talented kids but uh they don't always become the the best of the best um and that's that's a great takeaway paul you see some more uh, yes. some more well, questions i've got one from uh, sanjeev um and and this may have been uh, answered along the way how do you make the synapses stronger so that the connection between the neurons is stronger to allow for skill to improve I oh, think I think you you touched upon that but is there a brief way that you can you would answer that precise repetition precise yeah. repetition precise focused focused repetition because you know there is one little part and if you really go into the brain it's called amygdala uh deep down inside the brain and it's 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 responsible for the emotional conversion yeah. Yeah. of the information right on uh, and and then and then and then the amygdala remembers under which emotional effect the information came so all the stressful information in the childhood we experience we remember because amygdala is the it clears out or it remembers or even gives an, an extra extra push let's put it this way into memorizing things if it's emotional that's why it's very important that all the teaching environments are very emotional positive obviously if they're negative they also stay stressed out in the in the in the in the in the humans in in the kids minds that's why it's very important that the coach is positive is fun is dynamic is happy because kids are going to faster remember emotionally positive information yep and, right and if on top of that their precise and stable repetition listen we have taken care of everything we got to take care of for the ages in the beginning now i know and and paul don't get me wrong i know you have 
your academy director and, and, and I don't know under, under what kind of pressure you are yourself for the results in the area. And I know sometimes it's very hard to actually block those results and ignore them. But, uh, well, if you collect the best kids, obviously you're going to be the best one in the area. It goes by the, by the, by the momentum, by the, by the nature. But, uh, but uh, you know, a lot of them, and I've seen, believe me, in Europe, you know, they fall so much for the, you know, getting the, 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 or the, the strong kids, fast kids, da, 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 da. And then later on, those kids, you know, everybody catches up with them later on. And they, they even forget what they are at the age of 15. Never, nobody remembers that they even played soccer at the age of 17. And at the age of 17, you should be starting with a serious education on a tactical level. Technique should be already taken care of. So it's not easy, you know, people say, you know, it's easy to make a player. It's so hard to make a player. It's so hard to make a player, product a player for the, I'm talking for the serious level. I'm not talking to actually make a guy that's going to be playing the beer leagues. Don't get me wrong, but, the, but, the, but the, it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. Yeah. It's a hard work. Got a question here um, from Grant Knight. How is perception trained? in the younger ages, or is it not emphasized until later? I mean, you see a lot of, you know, a lot of this, like you had mentioned, that um, is really coming to the forefront, you know, training, awareness, perception. Did you guys do that at Zagreb? Did you talk a little bit about that? Or, or no. did you train it in what ages? No, no, I swear to God, no, up until the ages you 12, nobody even mentioned the word uh, awareness. <laughs> Nobody even mentioned the word space perception, you know, where are you going to be? Just focus on technique so kids are going to be well knowledgeable to use the tool that they're going to be solving the problems with on the field. And then you get them surrounded with a semi, we call it a semi-active environment where they're going to be pushing. So they're going to be so under opposition that the opposition is not going to be a disturbing factor. So they're going to ruin the preciseness and the flow of their technique. Because technique is, is a cure. Technique is always going to be their technique. If technique is going to be fragile, if technique is going to be, you know, changeable under every given new circumstances they're going to be uh, uh, pressed against or, 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 or surrounded with, it's not going to be reliable technique down the road in the area, right? So up until the age of U12, no, nobody was even talking. And that's why I'm so amazed when I hear at the age of U7, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not, uh, I, I came here because of the friendship with Tom and we, we, we propose and we teach or teach or talk or share knowledges about the same thing. But I want to hear serious institutions that the game is the best teacher, that, that, the, uh, that, that uh, uh, you know, they're going to be making decisions because the decisions are going to be taking the tools and they're going to be it just biologically can't happen. It cannot happen like that. You know, it has to be formed, stably formed, stably formed motor program, which is a pattern uh, that we just saw what it is. And this is how the body works. And I'm amazed how serious. I mean, you've, you've heard, Tom, even ourselves with the Saul, our friend from England, a couple of guys that came along from serious clubs, but they said, listen, it, it's a mess. It's a mess where when then when you see at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the warm up, you see how kids are actually unstable in their technique. Just imagine what's going to happen when they actually get to the serious stage, which is going to be 15, which is not even semi-serious stage they're going to be exposed to later on if they're going to become in a professional level. So I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. I'm concerned on a, on a, I'm not concerned. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm sharing my, my, my opinion. And as I say, I'm, I'm not the guy that's going to be calling people around and tweeting and say, listen, guys, do this. I'm, I, just my, not my personality, but when somebody asks me, I can't lie to myself and say this is a normal pathway because kids are going to be having not problems. Kids are going to be quitting soccer at the age of 14 because every time they're going to be willing to do something more demanding, they're going to be <laughs> not able to. They're going to be not able to. They're not going to be able to because they're going to be exposed. If they are, they're going to be exposed to somebody stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until they're going to be too strong against them and they're going to be sick and then going to be quick. They're going to cut. But we have, we listen, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have literally eight years to educate our kids on a technical perfection. And then from the age of 12, 13, we have another six, seven years to actually educate the kids for the individual tactics, individual tactics, what is 
it's an individual adaptation of your own body to solve individual tactical problems. Aha, ball comes from here, I'm gonna turn there. Ball comes from here, I'm gonna turn there. You've seen the talented kid, talented kid, quote to quote. He turns one side, no matter who's on what side coming, coming at him, because that's a, such a strong individual program wrong that he has. That's what I would like to say. Again, it's not easy. It's a freaking hard job in the academy. But this is the only way if you want to, not you, but if we want to make, make the kids, kids, kids technically nearly per perfectual, uh, uh, the talent, the culture changes a whole lot. Why? Because it changes the softness of the, of the touch. It changes of the psychological addiction to the ball where kids, you know, I mean, listen, I, I play chess with my kid like three days in a row. The fourth day, I miss this chess game uh, with him because I get addicted. It's just a biological addiction, every, every kind of addiction. The same thing with the ball. If the kids with the ball, the age of three, four, five, six, seven, that's already four, four, four years of the addiction, he's going to be right there. Now, at the age of three, the problem is you don't know if he's going to be the soccer player because of the speed, agility, all these other things. But if they're all right there, you're going to be taking the ones that are, that are agile, that are fast, but having the same or bigger starting elementary entry point that other, other ones don't. That's one lucky thing that we here in the Balkans area have more than, for example, Austrian kids or, 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 or other kids around. In the States, I don't know. I would also like to hear you out. How do you see the, the strategical future of the development of the continent over there? Because I don't, I don't, I don't see how, uh, how is it going to be in the future. I, I think with the, with the quality, for example, just one, and, and then I'm going to let you. I was, I was running the Croatian national teams. And the first international match of the Croatian youth national team, youngest youth national team was U14s. And my friend, Jim Morehouse, he was, uh, he was at that time, I don't know if you know him, he was the technical director of the, of the national team of the US. The first friendly game we had was Croatia against US. We got so friendly that flew, Cro United States always flew to Croatia at the U14. So the first international friendly that US ever had was against Croatia. U14 this year, again, next year, again, U14. So every generation, U14, 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 U14. Listen, we got our asses, pardon my language, butts kicked every single time because they were so physically dominant mm -hmm. with a couple of, don't get me wrong, you know, strong, tall, speedy, 5-0, uh, 4-0, 5-0, At the age of 14, at the age of 16, it was 2-0. At the age of U19, it was 2-2. At the age of 21, we were kicking their butts. Why? Because it was, it was just biologically, biologically orientated too much. And then you're choosing the wrong kids that weren't under the umbrella of the focus because they weren't physically good enough. And then it goes, it falls along, 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 along. But it's a topic we can, hopefully we're going to catch up somewhere physically all together and then, and, then, uh, and then continue. Maybe in Tokyo one day. Anytime, guys. <laughs> Bunch of questions. Here's here's an interesting one from Shabab. What would you tell coaches that want to go abroad from the states to Europe to become involved with coaching? Uh, I, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, it's 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 a uh, you know. There's always a question is easy, but the answer is always not easy. Uh, I wouldn't be definitive in answering these questions. Uh, first of all, to go from the States, where from the States, which environment from, because you are from the States as well. And you, as I understand, I haven't never, never visited you, but I understand you are, guys are extremely well organized. Uh, and also in Europe, you have some bad places to go to as well. So first of all, question from where in the States to where in Europe? Uh, it's not necessarily always uh, a solution for the coach to go to Europe to be getting the good information. It's also not necessarily always a good thing to leave U.S. because you're going to be leaving maybe environment that has a good information already. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that as a recipe. But if for you, Paul, or whoever guys need any kind of advice down the road, any kind of a location where the young potential good coach might want to ask for some different information or, or some extra information, I'm here to, uh, I'm here to assist. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. No, oh, sure, guys, you go from U.S. to Europe. No, I wouldn't recommend that because I've seen a lot of places that are not as, as, as good as, as people appear to, uh, to present themselves for.
from Luis Mora, at what age or at what point in development do you determine a player's best position on the field? Uh, polyfunctional in multiple positions. Yeah, yeah. In a book, in a book, we uh, uh, I put that already. At the age of uh, fifteen, you should already have your primary position and a backup position. Up until that, at the age of twelve, uh, you should be having, let's say, your two positions that are equally, let's say, equally qualitative, obviously I'm not saying about the goalie or, or not being goalie because it's, 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 it's different, but let's say at the age of 15, 14, you should be focusing having your primary and backup position. At that time, you should be already having that. Uh, up until the age is 10, 11, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother about, obviously you're going you're gonna to know if somebody is fast, if somebody is left-footed, if somebody, you're going to be aiming towards something, but having any kind of a definition prior to the, let's say, 12, 13, 14, it's, uh, it's not needed, according to my experience. So, Romeo, I've got a question for you. Um, Tom and I are doing a lot of work right now here in Houston in regards to getting more involved with the, the school the districts. You had mentioned that in Croatia they have, you know, they have soccer classes where you can choose it. At what ages do they start? Is it, um, are these, these optional classes? These are, uh, these are, I mean, is it, is it like a PE course here where, you know, in PE here, maybe they'll have eight weeks of soccer and then we'll move to a different sport. How much soccer do they play in the schools in Croatia, say, you know, kindergarten through sixth grade? I think this is the, the this is the age group we're aiming because when when it starts it's already age seven so they already have either the the trainings and the clubs and the optional classes in a school as they do but in the kindergarten they have uh, they offer it's not obligatory uh, it's 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 they have offer uh, because not not all the kids are let's say as dynamic motor motor wise and, and, and not going, even though at the age of those early ages, uh, they are being uh, pushed. When I say pushed, I don't mean demand, strongly demanding that you have to be going because you see they just kids doesn't have the will a bit, maybe not even physically there, but let's say 80, 90% of the kids in the kindergarten schools are are to take um, uh, twice or even three times a week uh, uh, classes that are that are uh, primarily because the soccer in Croatia is, uh, as Tom always like to say, it's a culture, it's a religion here, and 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 if you're not going to be the soccer player, you're not going to be anybody, right? Obviously, then the later on they realize they're gonna they're gonna make something of their lives, uh, if not that, but. Uh, they they are offered they're offered the soccer classes. It's not a soccer class. It's a, exactly what he's 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 talking about. You know, ball handling, kicking, playing, jumping, uh, rolling, blah, 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 all these things. So they get in love. So they get as much of the repetition as they can. And then later on, as the time goes, even believe me, uh, some scouts because it's a small country. Some scouts all around. They're already you know, hear information here and there. You know, there's this unbelievably agile, fast, aggressive kid that has some ball, ball handling softness skills, and they're already right there in the academy signed because they're fighting for the kids already to sign them at the age of seven already, you know, not necessarily at the age of 12. Um, so it is in the schools now, should it be more or it's too much? I don't, I think it's appropriate. I think it's okay uh, enough. Luckily, we still are, the country where the it's everything is bunched up not as spread out as you guys have it in the states and uh kids still do get together and play and kick the ball around and uh and and play before or after even the technology the, the apple and the iphone technology took it over here as well more and more but still luckily we have those uh let's say social mentality of the nation that people kids Maybe I would have, should have recorded, for example, should have recorded one afternoon after the, after the kindergarten or the grammar school day when the kids finish their class, the playground, after, you know, just beside the, the, the school, you know, kids, a lot of them stay around and they kick the ball around, play basketball, play anything, soccer. That's one privilege that we still have. And that's the culture what we, spoke, what we speak about, right? 
Yeah, I, I um, went to Barcelona last year. We went for the Mick Cup and, you know, there's a couple of days we got to, you know, go around and we walk around and we see this, the kids, even at the lunchtime of the school, they're playing soccer, full games going on on the lunch fields. And I, I don't know if I necessarily see that a lot here in the United States, that cultural dynamic that you're talking about. Um, That's a culture, yeah. It's something that that um, that we would love to to influence here. Um, question from Ristic: What is, what is the scouting recruitment structure philosophy when you are at Dinamo, and and how are the players identified before they come to you, fourteen and below? The uh, you know the thing is we have the million literally million. It's a, it's a, it's a small country, a uh, relatively big city. I mean maybe size of the. Uh, how can I compare that Zagreb? Like not even 1 million people. It's 100,000 registered players overall. So not a, not a big population, not too many. And literally everybody knows everybody. So the scouting, when, when there's a, you know, they have this first division, even for the kids, you, you tense, you know, they play uh, tense and then you have the 6v6 and the 5v5s and then 7s, seven, 7s, seven, eights, 8s later on. And then uh, it's a word of mouth around. Everything is within 10, 20 kilometers around. Everybody knows everybody. And the scouting network, um, here and I think you cannot apply to uh, to the, your 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 air your dimensions that you have over there. It would be tough, but uh, it's always about the quality. It's always a lot about the personality traits because we uh, uh, prior to anything we already kind of know or 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 hope that all the kids are going to be technically good. Okay. You know what I mean? They're going to be. So you're looking for the you're not even you're not you know you're not even bothering yourself with a with this much of a of, of a talent uh, now okay I'm going to be getting a good guy of course you're going to be getting a good guy I mean all the guys are good good they, they come so it's not about the being good or not good technically it's about do they have the, those bloody mentality you know what I mean so that that is sometimes the trigger requirement because we already acknowledge and 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 and, and presume that those kids are already talented enough to be making the, 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 not all of them, but that is not the pr primarily criteria. Primary criteria is however funny that seems, is listen, who's got the drive, who's got the passion, who's got the working ability, who's got the killing mentality, and who's gonna be able to, to endure, you know, because we assume, presume that they're already technically able to the level, uh, up to the level, however, however crazy that might seem. That, 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 that's a really good point if I jump in here to say that, you know, most of the coaches' education over the last several decades has all come from Europe, and it flows that way, whether it comes out to Asia from Europe or goes to America or whatever, and you're spot on. Basically, when all of those curriculums were made, they never thought of the idea that players weren't going to be good enough technically. So if you look at all of the coaching courses, and I've done just about every one that you can imagine, there's very little technical training that goes on. And, and, and at the other end, because it's assumed, like you just said, that there isn't a technical deficit. Those players are good. So that whole idea of just let the game be the teacher, they're assuming when they came up with that phrase years ago, that all those players were very good technically. So when you're already good, very good technically, yeah, then the game does kind of become the teacher a bit because you don't have to worry because you're comfortable with the feet, with, with the ball at your feet. And that's one of the biggest, biggest misconceptions in, in, in what's happening with coaching. And it's that, that, that thinking of only it's the coach and the player paradigm, the, the player and the coach. That's, that's the traditional sense that we think about, right? And, and I keep saying this over and over again that the symptom goes misdiagnosed. So in all these countries out here in Asia as well, in China, in Australia, some of these places, the players just aren't good enough technically. So they're thinking that these national curriculums are going to solve all of those problems, but they very rarely do. And I think that's a very Eurocentric approach. And that's why all of the coaches' education came from Germany, then it came from Holland, then it came, it came originally from England. Now it's coming from Belgium, it's coming from Spain. You don't have a technical deficit in those countries because the entry level is just like you just said it. You're a, everybody knows that the Croatian kid is going to be a good technical player. And that's similar to here in Japan. So I tell people, like you were just saying, you know, if someone wants to come and study, I often get coaches telling me, I want to, we want to come to Japan, we want to come to Japan to study. You'll be disappointed. 
because the coaching isn't that good here. But the players are very good technically. You know, so it's upside down. In America, the coaching is much better in America, I would challenge, than it is here in Japan or in Korea. But we, we develop better technical players. Why? Because it's the culture, man. So yeah. there's a lot of these misleading things that people thinking that's happening in these countries that they're, they're really kind of, they're investing into a development scheme that's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, flawed. You know, the way, the way that all of the coaching schemes have been, have been set up for so many, many decades. And what I say is, in closing, is that football hasn't caught up to what science already knows. And that is that skill acquisition happens much, much earlier than supposed in a lot of these national curriculums. So, it's yeah, kind of my two cents. True, true. No, not true. You guys, if you have any questions at all, please feel free at any time to unmute yourself and ask. Here's another one from, from Sanjeev. Um, in order to develop this technical efficiency, should the exercises be repeated over and over with lots of different skills, or is it better to focus on the same few skills with the same exercises? Uh. I would go. I would go broad um, early in the development, um, not having, not not trying to specify the the, the the specialty in the players this early. Obviously, later on, if he's left-footed, if he's going to be the winger, you're always going to be having. They're always going to have his strength, and then later on, obviously, you're going to allow. But in the early ages. And those, when we speak about those early ages, I would really go broad with the uh, with uh, with the technical uh, development on all the. And you, as a coach, and you as a good coach, you will always see, aha, uh -huh, this guy's got something special with with these things. And then you will let him. You let him. You let him do it because he's going to be. Those are some things that he has talent, and talent is something what is inevitable. What is what is something what is a God given gift, and you got to respect that. And we all got to respect if it's a strong talent. But I wouldn't want to. You know, uh, uh, appreciate the talent this much, so I'm going to be avoiding and and neglecting the uh, the use of other things to back up with. Because me, as a coach of the opposing team, I'm going to be always trying to see, uh, okay, this guy's got that, 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 that. I want you guys to go block his strength over there, and 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 then we're going to win the game. Because you always, uh, you also have to try to understand my point right now, because I. From the development phase, I came into the competitive phase and as a senior coach of the national team. And uh, now when analyzing the opposing team, I always try to find their weaknesses. And the weaknesses are in tactical uh, area, but also in the technical area, depending who you play against, right? And um, so let's, let's allow the opposing team coaches as little as possible options to, you know, to find in our players being not, not up to the level. This is this is the uh, this is the general answer. There's a good uh, good kind of equation. This is an Angela Duckworth. Tom knows this one from the, the book Grit. Um, she wrote the book, and she said, you know, talent is, and what you're talking about, Romeo, is there, there's talented kids. There's kids that pick things up quicker, more naturally. She has talked about how a talented kid is somebody that can learn something quite quickly, but there's also a lot, a lot of kids out there that can develop the skill through effort, through a lot of effort. And that, that, that equation, talent plus effort, is what gets skills. Some kids, like for instance, Tom and I, we work with you know, we're literally dozens, hundreds of kids that are just starting off. And when you first start to see these kids, you know, fool around with the ball, no one would necessarily say they're, they're talented. But over time, because of their effort, um, they, they gain a skill, right? And I think that's what, that's what we're trying to do with our younger kids. We have 15 core ball mastery exercises that we've been using in the soccer starts at home, like kind of our video skills library. We do a lot with, you know, and Tom, you can talk more on this, but, you know, trying to develop both feet, left foot, right foot, a lot of pullback and Vs, because it was actually a Romeo, the first video you showed of that guy, really super, super talented. It looked like he was doing a lot of 
the pullbacks, you know, with the bottom of his feet. So, so um, Sanjeev, on, on what we do with the young kids, it's a lot of repetition of about 15 different things to start them off. No, no, I agree with the, with the, with the, with the, with the lady that you uh, uh, cited her, her sentence. Uh, uh, you know, there's also this one quote, beautiful to me, you know, the champions are made when, when nobody is watching. Uh, and, and, and that's exactly, you know, the, this, this drive, this passion. And I, and I think, uh, I know for myself, because I know how hard it was, even though now when you, when you take a look at somebody's CV, you know, everything went really nice in your life. It never, it never went easy. It's always a struggle. It's a struggle now if, because you want to achieve more than, than from where you're at now. Um, uh, if there's no drive, and, and this is why I put those three photos with their bloody heads over there in the beginning, because this is what you know kept them going, and uh, and and this is why they. This is even why they corrected their deficiencies they have, the weaknesses they had. Uh, those three ones, I can I can even pull out probably from the internet maybe half of the Croatian national team a photo here and there with their bloody heads. Some sometimes every once in a while, uh, because that that's exactly right. If you get a technical kid with no fuel in their engine, uh, he's going to stop driving sooner or later. There's got to be some some fuel in the engine, and then this motor will never stop 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 driving. <laughs> All right, got one here. Are there one or two books you'd recommend? that speak to the philosophy and ideas you've been talking about. And I, I really quickly want to say that there are two books for me. One is Soccer Starts at Home. If you haven't read it, you, you should read it. You should, you should try to have as many people in your club read the book and parents. Um, and then I haven't read your curriculum yet completely, but the Croatian Federation, the curriculum, um, is is uh, is another one that's fantastic that I've heard from, um, but Romeo, what what are what are two books for you? I, I would be the same. I read all Tom's books, uh, the ones that I was that I was able to. Uh, I'm not by the latest edition. I, I don't think I've. I've uh, I, we're friends, so uh, you know when I ask him for the book, it's gonna kind of sounds kind of strange, but I will ask you for the for the newest one. But I read it, and and, and it's exactly it. It's all about technique. I wouldn't, you know, when you when you when you when you been through really all and then you see all all the stages uh how it looks at the age of 10 how it looks at the age of 15 how it looks at the age of 30, 20 or even 30 then you know what is important at the age of 10 or at the age of five that's why i really want to go farther than what you have and, and and that's why even i'm getting a lot of invitations from from various uh locations all around the world uh and uh, because tom spoke really highly of you personally as a person and then as a leader of the academy and then, and then I, I, I decided, sure, let's go. Let's, let's share the knowledge and to get to know you guys more. But I wouldn't go much farther than what you have and, uh, and, and the philosophy. Uh, it will take some time for that to take effect. Uh, but when it does, uh, then it's going to be a blast. Uh, then the rest of ones are going to try to catch up. And then they will, will catch up. But then when they do the actual catch-up motion thing, then it's going to take some time for them to actually take effect. So... Uh, uh, just keep it up and keep it keep it the way you are and a hundred percent I mean it took us it took us ten years to make the uh, to make the effect in the academy but it was worthwhile it was worthwhile well this is uh, this has been great is there if there's any other questions you guys for Romeo uh, please please ask him now uh, while we got him I mean it's just amazing to have him on here with us and Tom as well. So, Steve, you got any questions, my friend? My PM one. Okay. Uh, Romeo, do you expect the print version of the book to be available again in the future? Uh, as I said, I was I was so so uh, so busy that uh, that I just uh, I mean I should get myself a bit organized because all these I also have <laughs> I got three kids of myself and I'm I'm in between a lot of phone calls with the agents and other possibilities here in Europe so I should really actually get that done somehow but I think uh, let me uh, let me see how many spare copies I have on for the personal for the kind of personal thing that here on the side to. Uh, to send something to Paul, and then Paul, you uh, 
distribute the way you think it's it's most efficient to uh, to people uh, that don't I have the it. Kindle version, but I would like to have have one for the club. That would be good. Uh, or or you have my I'll send Paul my email and then you guys whoever has been on a on a, on a, on the Zoom call I will try to uh, well not personally maybe maybe uh, ship one one bigger shipment to uh, to Houston and then you can distribute that from from Houston to uh, maybe that be that be something that would make sense I think that'd be great thank you thank you Romeo I have a question. Um, I've asked a lot of questions. My name is Sanjeev. Um, I, I'm, I'm interested, and I think I already know the answer, but I, I, I love details. So when I'm running uh, technical sessions, I love the details uh, of correcting everything. And I'm guessing from what you've said, the details are where it's at, right? In terms of developing your player to the highest level. Anyone could have anyone do core skills, but if you don't correct the details daily, and at all moments, then they're, then they're developing the negative um, movements, really. And if you're developing negative movements, you're not actually getting better, you're getting worse, right? True, true. And I would, I would, I would combine that with the, uh, with the personality trait that I, that I uh, implied in the beginning when I spoke about the coaching requirements. It's called the implementation of the demands. That means you have to take the best out of the drill, take the best out of the you call it a detail obviously it's a detail the bottom word is a detail but in a general sense of 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 of, of a knowledge it's a demand that you want to take and make on the, on the field and you want to implement and take the best out of the drill because you can you can use a drill that arsenal has and, 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 and give it to the kids at the age of you, you 10 you won't have the same effect so the detail is obviously definitely because uh, as you go and watch those big games on, 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 you see how, how simple it gets actually at, at the end, you know, how simple this little pass is, you know, how, how gentle, soft, it looks easy because they're, they're the masters of the, of the skills again, uh, all together, personality, tactics, uh, physics, everything, but the skills to begin with. So, uh, um, I mean, I think, I think the entire, the entire Zoom call today should be, for my opinion anyway, should be uh, put under umbrella of the technique only, not only technique first, uh, because there's time for the tactics later on. Uh, when I say later on, not too late, but there's plenty of time for them. Uh, and for me, for, for, for the sense that I have in the States, it gets in the tactical area too, too, too early, uh, because you want to win the game, you want to win the cup, you want to win that, win that. Yeah. Even though you will not win it with, with tactics, you're going to definitely more win it with the technique. However system you play, just put it 11 technical players on the pitch, you play any system. Don't even say, tell the system you're playing. The yeah, game, I agree. They're going to be better, right? You don't even have to say, now we guys going to play that. Just get them on the field and they're going to beat them because there's technical dominance. So uh, I think we're all on the same page and we're repeating something what we know. Why should we are confirming something what, what we, I think we know? And I'm glad we are on the, on, in this area because I don't completely disagree with the you know, decision-making things when the kids are not technically able to perform the basic skills uh, uh, on the level they're at. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Oh, hi, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hi, How are you? hi Sam. Hey, up? Hi, Paul. How are you, my friend? Yeah, I'm waiting for Trinidad to open up so I can go back, coach. <laughs> Good to see you. Listen, uh, I have a question for you, Romeo. First of all, thank you, Romeo. Great job. It was awesome. Um, I can see everything that you talked about is dealing with players who can tie their shoe and spit and run at the same time. But the reality is, is that the kids here in the States, when we first start with them, and not so much us as coaches, but more the recreational coach who has never played the game, who's never kicked the ball in their life. My question to you is, what kind of help can we give those coaches to be able to transmit something that we're talking about here to those kids? who can't tie their shoes, who can't kick a ball, uh, as well as the coach. Because the majority of the kids that, that are working here in the States, and I don't know about, per se, Canada, 
but in the United States, most of the kids that start playing soccer are being coached by people who can't even kick a ball themselves. And I think that's really where the whole problem begins. Um, yeah, there, there are kids, as time goes by, they evolve because maybe their dad played or they play with their uncles or, or they just, you know, got caught in the game and, and they end up with someone like San or, or, or other coaches who are on this line who are able to teach them some stuff. But in the, in the beginning stages in, this, in America, the majority of the kids are being coached by very nice people, but they can't even kick a ball. So my question again is, knowing that, what do we need to do to change that? I will, I will try to be as simple as possible, even though it's very, uh, it, well, it's a simple question, but the answer is, is, is kind of complicated. Uh, I've, I've somehow specialized myself in, 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 in the area of academy uh, structure and development and analysis and the entire work. So the, right. the, as Tom is saying, the entry level is, is uh, I'm not going to say crucial, but n close to being crucial, like very nearly crucial because the academy, you can, as, as Paul said, you can catch up if you have a drive and passion, you can catch up with a lot of things if you have a if, if, if drive. So even if you missed in the beginning, but imagine then if, if, you, if you actually force the guy from the very start with the same drive he had, and then what would the outcome be uh, even, even, even halfway through? So um, uh, uh, not, because, not because he's here, but, uh, but uh, you have a lot of uneducated parents, you said, right? That they've never had a chance. I, I, think it, it's, I, think it's, I think it's worthwhile. I think it's not much of a harm to read one book to get them the basic information if they care about their kid to, to actually help them raise the level of the entry level that they're that they gonna try to do. So when they come to the age six, seven, eight, nine, when let's say not I, but people like academy directors like Paul take it more over. So it's gonna help them, not help them, but help their kids to begin with. So, so um, uh, in such a, on such a big, big continent and country and with the, with the, with the fact that you're saying that you, I mean, how are you going to now? So you got to educate parents. So you got to get on that. But as I said, I think the idea, the global idea that Tom's saying the, the, about, about uh, soccer starts at home, it is not a harm to actually read one book and give the kids three, four, five, even one little tip. Okay, let, let's do this. And this guy is going to be already on a higher entry level down the road. Because theoretically, uh, to go, I mean, I've been in Canada for a year over there. And, and, and I know what you're talking about. And then again, you know, we speak, I don't disrespect whatsoever. I mean, I swear to God, when, when, when they say volunteers, I really, you know, I take my hat off and say, listen, I appreciate that. But to give volunteer a respect, you know, a job to actually coach my kid because he's a volunteer. We're going to respect the, 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 the fact that he's a volunteer. And now we're going to expect the guy to be, it doesn't work that well. I mean, let me be a volunteer and go into the, into the hospital and make a surgeon surgery on somebody's heart because I'm a volunteer. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You know, you, maybe that's yeah, does. radical, but, uh, but uh, this is, I think that, that, that it, 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 it's like that. So, uh, it is the, maybe I'm not the best person to answer because you guys are from there. I go there every once in a while. I might even move my kids to, to, to school there on a college level, my three kids, uh, because I also I have a, a U.S. Uh, well, green card anyway. Uh, so for the, for, the, for the few, because I think a lot of advantages in the, in, the, in the college educational system in the States as opposed to Croatian one. So I'm going to go there maybe, right? But I also see the, 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 the problems, the weaknesses in the soccer education especially in the early ages, because everybody, I mean, I've been to a million of those NSCA conferences. Now they're called United Coaches Conferences. I, I don't know how many times I've been there five, six times as a presenter. Yeah. Every time I get there, I ask, please, can I have the kids that are, sure, no problem. Every time I get there, I get it. And, and, and okay, you want to show something to the, to, the, to the coaches and you end up being, not embarrassed, but you, the, the coach of- you the Tie your shoes for them. 
Dan Shushet, so you know what, 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 I, what I did last time? I swear to God, the one, the, the one in the Los Angeles one, that was the last time I was there. I came on my own expense three days earlier and I asked the organizer, which is the team that I'm going to be having on the presentation? And they told me this and this and this and this. So I came three days earlier and I found the director and I said, listen, can I come to your club? Sure you can. So I was going three consecutive days to the club working with a team so it looked okay on the actual, on the actual conference. Otherwise, it would have been it would have a been nightmare. Crazy. Nightmare again. So we just, you know, rolling, rolling and repeating again and again. And maybe, as you say, Paul and, and, and Tom, you have more experience. All I know that, all I know that, you know, the gap is going to be so big later on that you won't be able to cross it. And people dream about Europe. People dream about that. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. I don't know. It's not an easy question. Maybe, as you said. Well, let, me, and, and let me just add to that. Too. I just want to add to that, too, is that when you get the entry level correct and you have an army of kids that are good technically, from 6 to 12 years of age, okay, like my own son, those kids that cross over that line into organized play that are already technically proficient, comfortable, they can master the basics, even paired with the inexperienced parent volunteer, that kid develops at least until 12 years of age. It's the kid that's starting from zero that I've seen also paired with a really, really good coach, and that kid doesn't develop. So it's simple yeah. if you think about it. The entry level for me now with everything that I'm seeing, if you really want to make a paradigm shift, because you're right, in America, well, you'd have to have an army of coaches. But again, skill is rarely the result of coaches at the early ages. That's it's right. That, it's that love affair with the ball and facilitating the love. So if you buy into that, then who would be responsible for that? Well, it's parents. It's before Can't they pass them over the line, you know? Well, you know, I met you a few years back, Tom, and I, I didn't know who you were. Keith, Keith Tozer told me about you. Sure. And because Keith, Keith knows you for, for many years. Yep. And um, what, what I discovered through your book is that it's not just the soccer part starts in the home. Everything starts in the home. You know, yep. everything. And, and what happens is a lot of these kids who are not, especially the kids that I work with, you know, in the past who have come from the inner city, they don't have any parents. Yeah. So it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a real struggle, the, the, the kids I've worked with over the years, <laughs> because not only that, that they don't have food in their house sometimes, or their parents are drug addicts, where their parents are working eight jobs and they're never home and the kids are raising themselves, <laughs> it, it becomes a huge struggle. Yeah. But going back to your book, you know, that's what I loved about it. And also the videos that you created showing how you create an environment within the home so that the kids can just have fun with the ball and, and, and manipulate the ball. I, I think it was, is every, Every recreational parent in America should have your book. Yeah. And, and, and that goes back to what you were saying, Romeo. If the parent just picks up one tip, just one, yeah. one tip from Tom's book, th they're going to be ahead of the game. You know, we, we, we in Croatia have the soccer culture, but in the, in the, in the environments that don't have it, uh, Tom is trying to artificially create a soccer culture, right? Right, yeah. And that's yep. and that's and this is obviously the only way because in the states there isn't any and and but with the individual individual investment uh, and I think every and I think I'm sure every parent cares about their own kid, giving them at least yes. some kind of physical motions motivation in these times of the technology of these iPhones and everything. Okay, let's do one hour of anything to, per day. I think you, it's a win-win situation. Now, whether this kid is going to be a soccer player, still, he's going to be some kind of a maybe basketball player, some kind of a, any kind of activity, maybe not even anything. He's going to be healthier to begin with, right? That's because right. He's got some, some, some activity uh, uh, in his early age, in these lack of, of activity 
circumstances we're surrounded with. So uh, it's, you, can, you can miss with that. That's why, but obviously to create artificial culture is also hard. And I know, and I see how hard he's pushing and okay, he's got a buy-in on a lot of areas around. He doesn't have to have a buy-in in Croatia because we have it naturally, it's a soccer culture. In yeah. Europe as well, mostly more alike, but in the, in the, in, on the con not even a country, on a continent like US, if you guys had the entry level on a, on a, on a level that you, it should be at, phew, that should be it should be an easy job for the academy or easier job later on for the for the academies and then and then the outcome, the final product, which is a senior player, would be something what I think the entire rest of the world would respect and be scared of because uh, you guys would be. Uh, something something very serious whereas now you're left to Pulisic being born Croatian genes or this guy being born Cro Colombian genes or this guy being born those Italian genes and those genes are again genes from their father which is a talent because he had a soccer culture we all come back to the same thing so let's try to it's not easy but at least we know I think it's good to detect the problem to at least start to try to solve it, right? Because if you didn't know what the problem was, yeah. then you're running around. Now at least we know what the problem is. Well, well Tom, I tell you, I'm not trying to sell your book, Tom. You know that. And I want everyone to know that. But if the people who are on this, if you haven't read Tom's book, you need to read it. it, it it's, it's, you know, you, you're going to go out the next, the next day and you're going to start telling your players, the, you know, especially the munchkins, go sleep with your ball, wake up with your ball, go back to bed with your ball, you know, and that's what's missing in the United States, that the, the feel of the ball, when you talk, Romeo, about, you know, having a soft touch on the ball and being able to caress the ball and treat the ball like your grandma, right, or like a lady, you know, the kids can't because they don't, they don't know. They don't know. And, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to sell Tom's book, but Tom's book needs to be in every hand of every parent that has a kid that wants, you know, to start out in the game of soccer. Definitely. You know, it, 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 that book is the Bible for, for American beginning stages of soccer, in my opinion. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I would, I would just say this. I'll, we'll, wrap it up here because uh, Romeo has been so uh, generous with his time but I think there's a lot of there's a lot of soccer leaders on here everyone here is a is um, very influential in their area and I think for me what I've learned in this process with Tom you know one of the first things that Tom said to me he said I would rather speak to 30 parents than 30 coaches and I didn't quite understand it at first but it really was you know down to this point of, of you know, like Romeo said, this developing culture, fabricating culture, creating culture, you know, how do you create culture? So, you know, if you're in charge of a grassroots program in the United States, like Daryl has Gulf Coast, you know, with a two, 3,000 kids in Gulf Coast, the most important ages are these grassroots ages that you can influence, four, five, six, seven, eight. These, these are where you need to do the most work in not just you know believing the kids can develop skill but also educating the families and the parents that's critical that could make a huge huge impact again we're talking about america right not necessarily croatia or brazil but in america i have this right here this is a fabrication of creating culture this is our skill builder card that we have and go to all the schools and it's all the grassroots program that's got every day of the month that they can practice on their own with their parent. It's got some moves. So we're, we're trying to influence the entrance level of the game. And I think if our country did that, if we really understood how important the entrance level is, in, in 10, 15 years, we could be that world power. But again, like Tom said, you know, if we're focusing only on the elite levels, if it's always about this or that or whatever, we're, we're missing the boat. So I think on a local level, you know, Sanjeev, you know, other people are doing some amazing things in their local area. You have to, you know, you have to affect your local area as well as you can. 
Because Romeo, thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you, Romeo. You're welcome all. Thank you, John. A pleasure. Hope to stay yeah, in touch. You. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, guys. Take thank care, you guys. for jumping on. This has been recorded, so um, we'll we'll be doing another one next month. But thank you so much, Romeo. This was amazing. Thank you, Tom. Everyone for jumping on. You guys, take care. God bless. Bye bye. See you. All the best. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.